Hey, Joe. Hey, Gary. Sorry, I'm just getting started here. Oh, yeah, we've got a little bit of time. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Um, my new horse, um, I haven't got on her yet, but uh, she got her first, we put her saddle on just the other day, and that she's never had a hind cinch. And so she did a little rodeo in our round pen. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But I've got to calm down, and I've got a, a flag on the end of a, um, a crop, uh -huh. uh, just a plastic, you know, flag thing. And right. uh, yesterday, I introduced her to that so for training. And she, at first, oh, but then I could run it all over her body, and she's no problem. So yeah. um, uh, either, probably tomorrow, I'll be uh, getting on her. Well, be careful that first time. Yeah, you, know. you got that right. We used now, to throw a bag of grain on them. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, for the weight? Yeah, for the way we just oh, put the saddle, spot. put the saddle on. Once they were good with that, then we throw a big bag of grain on there oh. and just use a bungee cord and yeah. kind of wrap it on, I and then lead, lead them around with that, and then add right. a second one. Yep. Yeah. And once they were good with the weight, then we get on. Well, um, when we picked her up, the woman who had been training her rode her in the in the round pen, and then and Teresa rode her. So oh. it's been ridden, but it's just that that was a different saddle, and she's never had this type of bit. She's always had just a one of those a, a non bitless bridle. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, Macaw, Hackamore, Macaw. Or Hackamore or Hackamore. Uh, Hackamore. Hackamore. Yeah. Um, so she got introduced to a bit, and she, you know, second day we put it in. I've been putting her head stall on, and she's fine with that now. So that's yeah, really cool. She's pretty paint. You know, my old guy was seventeen two. This one's. 14, not uh, 14, three. <laughs> Your feet are going to drag on the ground. I know. It is so cool how small she is, but she's, she's stock stout and she's like really strong looking. So yeah, sure. I think it should be just fine for me. So, yeah. Those not. horses tend to be a little more agile on the trails. I have a, a 14, three, 14, four uh, horse as well. One yeah. morning. And, uh, you know, when you're going downhill and around turns or switchbacks, they do it no problem, right? Yeah. Whereas the bigger horses takes a little more <laughs> yeah. space yeah. to turn them, right? Yeah, one time I was on a single track trail with the, the, uh, the coast ride when we went over to Santa Cruz and we we're on a single track on a steep hill and my horse fell down the hill with me on her, him, mm -hmm. and I was able to jump off immediately and he slid down maybe 15 feet and a bunch of trees stopped him. Wow. So he stayed there. Of course, he's spooked and all. He's got a saddle on and everything. Yeah. And uh, um, I just um, gave him like probably 30 seconds for him to get his wits about him. And then uh, he stood up and I climbed up the hill with the lead rope in my hand. Well, I guess I had the reins in my hand. And uh, then he, he scampered up. Stood there, shook himself off. I uh, inspected go. her, inspected him. No, no cuts, no bruises, no nothing. So I got on him and we rode away. There you go. <laughs> it's nice when that happens. Yeah, and it's then, nice when they have they they have an issue and then they come out of it so fast. Right, and then uh, in the round pen, I was trying to shoot, uh, get rid of, move Teresa's horse out of the round pen into his paddock, her paddock, and she decides to do this buck, and I didn't realize I've never seen her buck right next to me. And cut my arm. Wow. Uh, that I've had one go right by my ear, right? We, whoosh. <laughs> yeah, when it hit Greg? my arm, it's like, what was that? I'm sure glad it wasn't my head. But it luckily- yeah, You really got to be careful with those off. green horses, right? Yeah, yeah horses yeah. are. Yeah. And then, you know, you'll have them all trained up and then you'll go out on the trail for the first time and that's a whole new experience to them. So, you know, walk them down the trail the first time. Yeah, and, we've already been walking them around the neighborhood. Yeah, good idea. And, uh, you know, see if you can get some of those uh, campaign signs that were left over because those are great training aids for horses, believe it or not. Well, there's still some hidden, hidden on trails <laughs> back behind people's houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, hey Greg, there's a term for that um that that type of trail riding where you you have obstacles and you're you're right. timed and the condition of what your horse how your horse reacts is a uh, is judged uh, something like trail timed riding or i forget exactly what it's called but yeah i do have um uh some um signs that got left i do hey craig what happens if a candidate doesn't remove their signs the next day 
We take them for uh, horses. <laughs> technically, they, they're, I think they're subject to fines or something, but in practice, you know, just tell them to take their signs away and they'll come get them. But do, um, um, is there an effort for, by some volunteer person just to go around and collect all these signs? It seems like it'd be easier for one. Well, I've person. reached out to all the people that I had who had posted signs and told yeah. them, hey, please take your signs down now. Yeah. Um, and I've driven around. I haven't seen any of mine, but I haven't driven every street in town. Right. And and some of them people put on the, you know, trails on the backs of their properties and things. So I haven't necessarily seen those. If, they, if you see any of mine, just let me know and I'll go get them taken care of. Yeah, I'll stop and pick it up myself. So um, I haven't heard how the final outcome. Is it final yet? It's not final. Uh, the, the, Mary is ahead of me by six votes right now oh, for Jesus. third place. So Glenn. Judith is in wow. first, Craig Taylor is in second. On election night, I was up by like 30. Um, Mary got way... It, so I basically, I've been winning the mail-in votes and Mary won the in-person votes by a pretty big margin. Oh. And... Uh, so as they count more and more mail-in votes, her she yeah. on election night they counted all the mail-in votes through the Friday before the election. Wow! And they didn't count the in-person votes until late in the night. So she pulled ahead there, and she was I think twenty-four ahead or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then every update that they've had, I've been <laughs> clawing back the yeah. gap. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and if you project it out, basically it's, it's hard to know how many votes there are left. But if you project out you know, a, a reasonable guess of how many votes there are left. It looks like it may end up a dead heat. <laughs> so I've, I've always wanted it to be an election that was a tie where you have to decide it by drawing lots. And I'm hoping that they, you know, we have some big ceremony or something where we get to choose exactly what random method it is that right. picks who gets to be the new council member. Do a wine tasting, whoever gets it correct wins. Yeah, exactly. Something like well, that. I, I voted for the both of you two. <laughs> so there's your tie <laughs> so we're saying joe it's all your fault <laughs> yeah right <laughs> morning everybody good morning alex good morning howard morning. Fred, good morning i don't know who's dialed in that is uh i think carolyn vertongan's number okay oh you have them memorized greg <laughs> okay and barbara sees trying to connect so that gives us a quorum. Good morning, Barb. Morning. We'll wait for, I know Liz is coming, Jacqueline's coming and Ellie. So let's wait for them a minute or two here. Thanks for sending the link out, Gary. I, I guess I missed the memo that said that um, we have to do, we have to now actually do that extra minute work ourselves to find them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not the end of the world, but it's different. Yeah, no, thanks. I don't know what you're talking about. Do I need to know? Well, the the um, town clerk used to send out the package to all the committee members once it was ready, um, so that you would get it the moment it you know came off the press. Yep. Now she just posts it to the town's website and oh. doesn't let anybody know she's posted it oh. to the town's website. So you kind of have to check in there. Okay. So what I started doing is just emailing. When I see it up there, I just email everybody the link to it. Good. If you if you are on the town's email, you get it in email, not specifically to you as a trails committee member, but there is an email notification that it gets posted if you're signed oh. up. Yeah, I must not be uh, on that one because I don't get that email. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll forward it to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check. Did Melissa say yeah. that that was in, an intentional change of policy or did she may have just overlooked it this No, time. she said it's, it has to do with, you know, her managing so many committees and commissions that she okay. just had to, you know, draw a line somewhere so she could get the work done. And, um, you know, is that like, like uh, Joe said, or somebody said, it's a minute worth of work to just climb up there and get it. So it's not the end of yep. the world, but her Barb, you said that. <laughs> and if you sign up as, as, uh, as Fred said, if you sign up for the trails committee notifications, then you'll you should get them there. Yeah. So I think this will will digest this one pretty quickly and it'll be old news. And mm -hmm. Alex, that's a good look uh, of you. It looks like you're a movie star um, waiting for something to happen. <laughs> I can't tell what it is, but you, you have a good look. <laughs> He's doing a trail trail hiking blog. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Gary, you're looking pretty darn good for a young father father of a youngster baby well this is what uh, sleep deprivation will do for you <laughs> uh, 
you're, you're blissfully happy and unaware of most things that go on. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's uh, very uh, uh, <laughs> hard to describe, but it, it's fine. We're doing okay. You don't have a new one, do you? Yeah, we had a baby boy. Oh, I didn't. That's why I was going. Yo, on. how did you yeah. miss that? I don't know. Where have I been? <laughs> I've read all my emails. <laughs> oh. Oh. baby adrian hanning he was born early in the morning on the 19th was the day that the day we had our meeting so he was born on a trails meeting day which i think is good karma yeah. um, and he's healthy he's almost a month old now and uh gaining yeah. weight and starting to colic a little bit so last night was a doozy <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Good news is he, he doesn't quite have the scream that his sister has uh, when victoria was this age my goodness she take you know you ever see that cartoon where someone screams in this year and your brain comes out that ear <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it felt like <laughs> if anybody wants some of that therapy come on by we can, we can. <laughs> i was just gonna say i think i'm not missing those Declan days. smile on she goes <laughs> no way gary been there done that <laughs> finally out of that <laughs> i know something okay let's get started we have a corn but um uh, we don't have Ellie here. Liz, you want to jump in to do minutes in case uh, Ellie isn't going to make it? I had an uh, affirmation from sure. her. <laughs> that was weak. <laughs> what happens, Liz, when you volunteer to do something that sticks with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, she, she asked me last time. <laughs> I did not raise my hand. All right, no problem. Who's yeah. who's the six five zero number on the bottom? That's not, not Ali, right? That's Carolyn Kertongan. When we get to public comment, we'll ask them to identify themselves if they're in for that. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trails and Pass meeting, November sixteenth. It is nine oh five a.m. We have a quorum, so we'll get started. Um, let me pull up my agenda here. Uh, Let's go ahead. We're, we're not going to do a roll call because it's pretty obvious who's here. So let's skip to number two, oral communications for items not on the agenda. This is the time where the public can address the committee um, for up to two minutes, but I'm going to waive that today because I don't think we have a whole lot of public comment. And um, on any uh, item that is not on today's agenda, if you have comments for those items, we ask you to hold on to them until we get to those uh, items on the agenda. So to that end, do we have any public comment? Oh, there's Ellie. Just in time. Let's see if you can get her up. Ellie, can you hear us? Gary, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome, Ellie. Sorry, I had some problems here with my computer. So here I am. Did the um, meeting start? We just started. We we were going to ask. Uh, we did ask Liz to take the minutes, but if you're prepared, okay. we'll. Um, I'm here. Yep. Okay. Okay, you ready, Ellie? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, okay I'll just restart. Um, it is now 9.07. Okay. We have a quorum. This is the Trails and Pass meeting for November 16th, 2022. Um, we're going to skip a uh, roll call so you know who's here based on the video. We'll go to number two, oral communications. Do we have any oral communications from the public at this time? If so, please raise your hand and we'll unmute you. I don't see any. So um, given that, we'll move into some of the written communications we, we received over the last month. Um, we, see, we received a message from uh, uh, Nicholas Targ, who lives up at the Hayfields, and he's communicating to the committee that he's concerned about the Larry Lane Trail and a section where it's getting really narrow. Um, it, 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 he's pointed out it crosses his property, but it's an easement that crosses his property, I believe. Um, and so uh, I know that Howard has been out to take a look at this and um, 
we'll get to that, I think, when we when Howard does his um, trails work presentation. But I wanted everybody to know that we received that communication. And then we received another communication um, from Christine Houlihan, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, about um, Alpine Trail um, near Rosati's. And um, she's requesting some signage in the area because of some um, observations of uh, usage violations. And um, I'm not gonna go into the, the whole story behind why we do signage the way we do, but we may wanna consider putting some temporary signs here. And uh, I'll let Howard address that as well when we get to his um, section. Um, as, as we all know, whenever we put up signs along Alpine, say no bikes, they just tear them down, throw them in the weeds, destroy them. They, <laughs> they don't last long. But, you know, it's, it may be still worth the exercise to, to just let people know we're watching. Um, but we don't want our signs all destroyed. So um, that's why we don't normally do what she's asking. Um, and I don't think she's here to, to talk about it today. So um, we'll talk about that during Howard's segment. Gary, did you also receive a communication from Liz Rubin on the Hayfields Trail? There's rebar missing. A rebar is sticking up because I think the um, the water bar is uh, is off, and there was some other item item as well. I told her to put it through to PV Connect, so I'm not sure if she did or not. Oh, that would have gone to Howard, and I don't have any email okay. from Liz Rubin. <laughs> All right. Uh, and if Howard got that, he'll let us know in uh, just a moment. But thank can you. I, can I also note that it there is no Hayfield Trail; it's Hay Forks. Yeah, I, 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 that's probably my slip. I call the, the whole community is called Hayfields, right? And, and so the the trail though is is Hay Fork, and and then there's the the the, the Joan Targ Trail, and you know, um, yeah. Yeah, they're all part of that they're the part um, of Woodside Highlands area, but I just want to be clear because that's actually an issue on some of our lists of trails and that leads to the public map and the resolution and all that. So it's Hay Forks. Hay Forks Trail. Thank you for correcting that. Okay. Um, I, that was all the written communications we had and I'll go ahead and close oral communications. Um, let's move on to item three, approval of the minutes from the October 19th uh, meeting. I was not present at the meeting, so I'm going to abstain. However, um, if anybody has any comments, questions, additions, deletions, edits, now is the time to do it. Thank you, Liz, for jumping in and, and doing the minutes last time. Yes, thank you, Liz. This is Ellie. Appreciate it. You're oh. welcome. And you may notice there in the new format that relates to our um, Brown Act training, um, as well as the move towards more action-oriented minutes. Um, my uh, request for um, some updates to them is that we um, refrain as much as possible from using abbreviation and at least um, fill out the abbreviations at least the first time that we use them. Um, uh, S SRTS is used throughout, and I don't think I saw a safe route to school in there. And I think if you were to go back you know, say in the next five years and look back on this, it'd be tough to understand. There's a few other that I think CI is used for capital improvements. So um, if we can just spell those out, I think it'd be, it's good for the long run. That's good input. Um, you know, I, I've been meaning to sit down with Melissa and have a talk with her about how, you know, minutes should be prepared in light that we're now recording all of our um, meetings. And, and when I have that conversation, I'll get back to everyone because I want to make sure one, we're, we're Brown Act compliant and two, we're um, capturing the, the, the information that we need to into the minutes. But at the same time, I, I, it seems obvious that we don't have to capture every little item anymore. So um, I, I want to learn where that line is and then I'll communicate that back to the committee. Maybe I can get that done this month. Craig, yes. Good morning. Yeah, a number of other committees are, are going through the same thing. So Melissa probably has some thoughts from discussing with other committee chairs as well about how they're doing it to kind of get everybody on at least a similar page, if not the same page. Um, and it's worth noting, not only do we have recordings, but there's audio transcripts also available of all of these Zoom meetings um, where there's, you know, automated voice to text transcripts that 
aren't perfectly accurate, but they're pretty good if you if you're searching for a term or something and you want to find you know jump right to that section of video, um, they work pretty well. Is Melissa going to attach those um, up on the website? Where uh, I've them? been talking with her and Carrie about it, so their Zoom has them all. Um, the, the question is because I think we post the videos for most, if not all, of the committee meetings now through YouTube, mm -hmm. and the question is kind of how to link those together. So I'm I'm talking about it with Carrie, and they're thinking about what the best way to do it is, and whether to do it automated or on demand or what. But th there'll be some mechanism for that. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's great. So let's uh, stay tuned with that and uh, maybe make that job a little easier and a little more efficient. But um, thank you, Ellie, for taking minutes this morning. Um, so then any other edits or suggestions, comments to the, to the October 19th minutes before we call for a motion to approve? I do not One thing I would say, Gary, is there is a a section at the bottom like of items to be on this month's agenda like to help you oh. and um you know that didn't really get i think there's one or two that's not quite on there or something but i don't know if we want to think about pursuing that in the future as the as the template um so that there's some accountability to decisions made then oh okay i'm gonna i'll i'll research that i'll um, talk about it next month, you know, and then the, it's on there for the next month. Yeah, that's a that's a, a very interesting thought because um, typically the way we do our agendas is, you know, they're, they're topics, they're not action items. Um, however, um, the topic kind of, it, it includes the ability to talk about action items related to the topic. And I've always been very careful not to you know, to leave our agenda items very broad so that we can talk about a lot of different things under them rather than, you know, having to be have them very narrow, like on the school board, for example, our stuff is incredibly narrow. I imagine the town council is similar, but here I like that we can talk broadly about it. So um, we'll have to find a balance there, but I think great idea and um, certainly will help us catch some of the larger topics. Um, so, so I'm all for it. Okay, sounds like we could go ahead and make a motion to approve. Um, can I get a motion to approve as written? Um, or do you want the uh, changes put in first for, for um, uh, Fred's uh, comments? How much we got? I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve them as submitted. Um, and Fred's comments were, were part of the instructions too, so I, um, he's right on. I don't think we need to be added to our minutes. Fred, how do you feel about that? Would you rather we edit the minutes? To I would rather at least spell out safe routes to school because I think if you were to go back and look at it, you'd have to go, you'd have to come to this meeting. You know, Fred, it There's does say safe route to school on it. It does? Yeah, it says it on, um, I just saw it. It's on, uh, um, it talks about the committee, the safe route to school committee. Okay, as long as the as long as there's actual clarity, I, I struggled to find it, um, um, but I was on the phone, so yeah. Um, uh, Alpine, it's B, it's um, it's uh, six seven. Oh yeah, P. seven B Alpine Trail slash Safe Routes to School Subcommittee Update. And then there's a connection of that to SRTS right there. Yeah, it's and really then below right it. number one says SRTS. Okay. I mean, it's not in brackets, SRTS, but so yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's maybe in it, but it's like if we want these to be readable, understandable going forward, yeah, it feels like an easy change to make. Yeah, Liz, are you cool with making that change? I, I think I gave Ellie the I gave Ellie the the file. She can just put in certs in there. I mean, she could just put it in brackets. The first time, what I should have done is the first time you do an abbreviation, you spell it out and put the abbreviation in brackets. And I did not do that the first time it's listed, I don't think, in a minute. So <clears throat> I think if we go do that going forward, to Barb's point, the, this sec, this minute from last meeting does have the full search spelled out, doesn't have the brackets and everything, but does have it spelled out so someone could figure it out. So we could approve them as is, and then we just all agree going forward that we use the standard 
Anytime you abbreviate, you got it first time, put that in there. Does that sound good? I agree with you, Liz. I think that's the best way to go. Fred, your thoughts? That sounds good. Okay. All right, great. So um, uh, I'll go ahead and accept Joe's motion to approve the minutes as written with the understanding that next time we'll do the abbreviations a little differently. And can I get a second? I'll second. Great, Fred, a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Ellie will abstain. I wasn't here. Oh, yeah, I have to abstain too, but I'm still in favor. But uh, <laughs> I have to abstain. So, Ellie, you and I have to abstain. Okay. Pass. Yeah, it's the lack of sleep kicking in, I'll tell you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be, I'll be really like my favorite term, Nat's ass here. But, Ellie, you have to, according to the Brown Act Treaty, indicate who approved by, by name. Well, I think I've usually done that, but if Gary is approving and he wasn't there, so do we have somebody else to make this motion here? Fred, a no. second. Who made the motion? Joe okay, made the motion. Okay, Joe, okay. And Alex, I mean, uh, Fred, second. Fred second. second. I think I usually put that down, but anyway, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. And uh, all in favor except for Ellie and Gary, because they were absent, right? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to the meat and potatoes here. Uh, item number four, old business. Let's start with Howard on his trail conditions, uh, work and budget for October. Um, we're noting that his normal maps are not included in our package. We don't know exactly why uh, that happened. Um, Melissa normally um, coalesces all that stuff into one, but we didn't notice it until Howard and I talked yesterday. So um, he will include those in December's meeting minutes package, but he's going to give us an update um, verbally uh, this morning. Howard. Okay, thank you, Gary. Uh, I'll get into the trail work that occurred for October. Uh, just a background, no major reports. Uh, the rain that we had, it, it was significant, but no, uh, no damage that we heard of. Um, so we spent eight hours in October. Um, typically this time of the year is a slow year for trail maintenance because uh, we did the bulk of the work in the summer. And uh, so it's eight hours and most of all of it is uh, 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 fallen tree removal. So we cleared a fallen tree on Arroyo Trail, uh, on Black Oak Trail and Lake Trail and Shady Trail and uh, branches on Veronica. So those were the items that were done in October. Um, I did also want to mention, uh, um, and I'll try to answer things as I heard them. Um, we didn't receive any uh, PV Connect from Elizabeth Rubin, or, um, but we'll can, we can address the Hayfields item. I, I've noted it there and I, and I can put it in, but PV Connect for the month of October, we, we did receive seven items related to trails. So um, it's a good tool and I encourage everyone to still use it. Uh, whether whether those things are maintenance or code enforcement related, it, you know, it, it, there's yeah. Once I kind of group trails together, that's what kind of spits out seven items that we dealt with. Hey, Howard, when you say um, eight hours, do you mean a, a team works for eight hours or eight man hours? It's just eight person hours. Okay. Uh, and typically, so two people that's, that's hours. our internal crew. Okay, okay. got it. Okay, great. Thanks, Howard. I'll, I'll make one point about um, uh, code enforcement. So we've been seeing a lot of parking on the trails, usually by construction crews um, near, you know, certain construction projects. And, and one of the things we've seen this round, it's just something I never caught before, is that the, the house that has the construction, the trail is not on their property, it's directly across the street. And so we, we haven't really been catching that when we review um, conditional use permits or um, site development permits, because we're really only looking at the lot under development itself. So uh, for example, on Fawn, uh, this is happening in two different places where the house is on the other side of the street <laughs> and they're parking on the trail across the street. And so we may have uh, not 
covered all our bases in those kinds of situations. But nonetheless, they're not supposed to park on, on the trails. And so thank you, Howard, for working really hard on Fawn. It's it's finally coming around. We get one or two trucks out there every day. You know, that's the nature of the beast here is under construction. Every time a new subcontractor, subcontractor comes in, they have to be told because they don't know. So I, I'm crafting a message to Laura to see if we can maybe do something a little different on our plans when they approve them to say no parking on any trail in the vicinity um, and uh, that we add it to the list of posted rules. I know on job sites they have to post the hours and maybe there's some other ones, Craig, right? They, they post the hours and, and that they're allowed to work. On that sign, maybe we can say no parking on trails. Um, we'll see. But uh, otherwise, this is going to keep going on. I don't really see an easy solution here. Um, it used to be, you know, many years ago, we had our own building official. So all we had to do was call Brent Hipsher up, and Brent Hipsher would go over there and, and show them to the trunk of their car if they didn't move it. And uh, he was a pretty tough guy. <laughs> Everybody remembers Brent. We don't have that anymore. We have a, a contracted um, building official. So they're not here all the time. And so I don't think it's in their scope of work to be looking for this kind of stuff. So now we have to report it, and uh, which means it goes to PV Connect or Howard, and then they dispatch the building official. So it's a longer process, a little more complicated process, and we're, and we're finding we have to, to enlarge the process to include trails in the vicinity, not just trails on the property that's being developed. So I'm going to work on that and see if I can come up with something with Laura over the next uh, month or so. So that's uh, that would be great because um, there's continually a problem on Shawnee as well with the big house they did. And then on Westridge, um, they're, they're, they're parking, you know, half a block on the trail. And mm -hmm. I've asked them, I've walked by several times and asked them, please do not park here, you know, who's the contractor in charge because you're on the trail and you're putting people in the street and they're consistently on the trail. So both places. Yeah, you know, there's a construction staging plan that has to get approved. I think ASCC approves that, maybe uh, staff does now, I, I don't know. But that staging plan should indicate where the parking will be at various stages of construction. And I'm also noticing that those staging plans aren't really what they used to be either. I think maybe because ASCC isn't looking at them, I, I don't know, but that'll be part of the, the conversation I think with Laura um, is, is they need to have adequate parking on site or they shouldn't be getting their building permit or they need a parking plan that you know, um, shuttles them in from a, a, a normal parking area. Um, it, that has to be on the plan before they get their building permit so yeah um, so and just for your information howard the one on westridge is really big and they're on there they they park on the trail they park on both sides yeah they park on both sides yeah. and that's that's uh mike um mike, mike's project we we talked with him remember howard about he wanted to redo the drainage ditch along the easement there it's, it's Westridge near, um, uh, not Possum, near Bow. Oh, way at the end, but yeah, near we, Portola Road. Yeah, near Portola Road. And it's a really wide area in there. They can, if they park close to the fence, there's still enough trail to get by. Um, but I don't know if they're, they're did they pull a, a um, an encroachment permit, Howard? Do you know? Um, I don't believe so. I haven't seen an encroachment permit for that area yet for any work for the on the trail. Okay. I'll uh I'll re I know the homeowner there. I'll reach out and talk to him and um and see where he's at. And uh, part of part of why he talked to us is he wants to improve that section of trail. He wants to move the irrigation ditch closer, either closer to the fence or closer to the road, but enlarge the area there where the trail is. And he's willing to pay for it, so I I I want to engage with this uh, this person so that we can um, take advantage of that if they're going to do it, and also straighten out the parking issue. 
I see somebody has their hand up on the phone. Who is that, please? And I tell you the phone number 650-678-7562. You have your hand up. Good morning. This is Caroline Vertongen. Thank you morning, for allowing to, uh, to participate. Um, I would like to comment on the Nate Horse Trail. Uh, my husband and I, we walked it this morning. Uh, people in the Nate Horse uh, community have asked that uh, the trucks for the fire station that are blocking uh, traffic and, and just uh, the enjoyment of that trail, um, that they don't park on both sides. And once again, they do. Uh, we can see there is some traffic management on call and they're further on the street, but of course the guy was on the phone and I could not reach him. So um, yeah, this is so uh, Mr. Howard, if you uh, could uh, note that and, and talk to the to people and say that it is absolutely uh, for public safety, they have to, because a fire truck needs to be able to go through and they cannot right now when they park on both sides. And in order to do that, they have to park on the trail. So um, it's, it's not acceptable. Thank you. Well, thank you, Caroline. You know, I, I'm thinking back to when that um, condition, I think it was a conditional use permit application that came to us. Um, and I did remark that they shouldn't park on the trail across the street. <laughs> I actually caught that one. But I didn't say anything about Nat Horse uh, Trail, so they're they're actually parking on on Nat Horse itself. Is that what I'm hearing, uh, Caroline? You need to unmute if you want to comment back on that. No, they they are on the trail. They park on the trail because a big truck doesn't fit on the street, especially when they 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 <laughs> park on both sides. Okay. I think Gary's asking, are they parking on a Portola Trail or are they parking on Nat Horse Trail? Yeah, thank you. Nat Horse Trail. Wow, okay. Because that's where the trucks for the, for the fire department are, are parking now. That's where they're parking. Howard, does that sound like that was part of their plan? Do you know? I, I know some background. So okay. uh, the fire department's contractor asked us, asked the town if they can park on Portola Road across the street. And there are no parking signs there. So we said, no, uh, there is public parking in other places on other streets. So uh, we did suggest Nath Nathorse versus instead of Patola Road, we, there, there's, there were multiple suggestions uh, such as you know paid parking with at the shopping center there or at behind Roberts uh, that we suggested or other public streets. Uh, at the time, Nathorse did not have when we looked at it, Nathorst uh, didn't have anyone parking on it, except from time to time, a landscaper would park on the trail, uh, not associated with the fire department's construction. Uh, but this week, I did see four or five cars on Nathorst properly parking on the asphalt area. So I haven't witnessed any illegal parking. So I and the, the planner that's associated with that project have been in discussions with that project team and we can, from what I hear today, can cut touch bases with the project team and go out there and find out if they're parking on the trail and let them know they cannot do that if that is not them. But they've been up front. Um, so I suspect maybe there might be some neighborhood landscapers that are parking on the trail, that could be parking on the trail. But whatever it is, we'll go out and take a look at it today and we'll be in touch with the contractor to let them know. Great, thanks Howard. You know, I'm thinking that if there's ever a reason to park on a trail, a fire truck is probably one of the things I would <laughs> like, Like, you know, obviously they're there for a reason. So, but yeah, if it's causing then landscapers and other folks to park on the trail, then that's not going to work. So we've got to figure that out. Let us know if we can help Howard, but it sounds like he got it under control. Okay. Um, well, I still had some more items, Gary, if you wanted me to continue or not. Absolutely. Please do. Um, let's see, the water bars, typically we spot, start clearing water bars in a couple of weeks here. Haven't been much rain, but we will uh, start on those items. Um, I can cover, let's see, uh, I just wanna let everyone know the posts were done in November. So next month, I just 
we'll put that on the uh, work update map. But the Cherokee Trail on Sossel, um, the new post that we talked about a couple months ago, uh, those are now installed. So I just want to let the committee know that. And th these are the ones uh, differentiating between where horses should go and where pedestrians should go um, between uh, Sossel and Cherokee. So that's done. That was the Mike, the Mike Nichols issue when he presented. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes, those are installed. So, uh, Gary, if there's any comments on them, uh, please let me know. Um, let's see. The Larry Lane, I know that was brought up. Uh, we did take go out and take a look at that. It's about 500. It's the trail is usable. Is it narrow narrower than 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 usual? Yes, and it's something that we could place on the list. It's about 500 feet of uh, grading it out, removing the slough on the edge there. Uh, but that's what's causing it. It's really just slough on the edge, uh, narrowing it. So that's something we could put on the list also to uh, uh, clear up. And let's see. I know that the, the sign requests contained in the agenda um, for temporary signage um, on Los Trancos Creek Besides Los Trancos Creeks at Rosati soccer field, um, I'm assuming they're talking about the backside of that. Um, there is, you know, they, they reference very narrow trail, but the trail there is actually pretty wide. Um, we haven't heard of a problem, but I'll get out. Uh, please email me. Typically, we put, we'll put temporary signage out there if the community agrees and if there is a known habitual problem. We haven't heard any yet. Um, so Gary, if you want to let me know if you want to put temporary signs up there and we'll, we can work together to do that. Um, but we hadn't had heard anything yet. Yeah, I would think I'd let the committee as a whole make that uh, decision because really I think everybody has some personal experiences on the trails that are, are, are valuable input into a decision like that. Um, I know I've seen bikes on that trail. I'm not on that trail a lot. So if anybody else has strong feelings about putting some temporary signs up there, uh, we're talking about the dirt path that goes behind, um, right? That the bikes are not supposed to be on. And so I'm, I'm wondering if anybody else has any strong opinions about temporary signs there. The dirt path that goes behind the baseball dugout thing area, or not the baseball, but the soccer area. Yes, that's where Chris Houlihan was talking about. It's been a problem in the past. And as Gary said, we put temporary signs up and uh, they disappear. Um, <clears throat> it seems like it would be, if we're gonna put signs up, having them um, posted on the uphill side, I guess I, I would say. I've seen mountain bikers use it, sort of kind of slowly crawling up Alpine Road. And that seems like less of a problem for us than if anybody is kind of cruising down it sort of going towards uh, Rosati's versus going sort of towards say Alpine Hills. Um, so if th that, that might also just lessen the likelihood that we get them taken down. Um, if, we're, if we're trying to address sort of people using that in a um, sort of going too fast on it and I, I think scaring someone per the, per the email. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I, I'm not opposed to putting up some temporary signs. I think when a when a resident you know voices their concern, I want to make sure that we um, take appropriate action. Um, having just one resident um, voice this, plus what I hear from the committee members, that um, I'm not opposed to putting some temporary signs up there. Um, in fact, that maybe it should be kind of a regular thing. Howard, do you have your hand up? Yeah, the, the sign is is mainly um, looking at the sign. It's more like a like a courtesy type sign. So we'll have to find something that's 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 similar um, if the committee wants to place it up. Well, it doesn't have to match the sign that um, was suggested. Um, it, the sign should be in in accordance to our normal practice of signage. Um, I wouldn't want you to go out and buy new signs or print new signs or anything, Howard. And they'll, they'll just be the standard paper one. We just find something off the internet, 
print it, put it in a plastic sleeve and put it on a barricade out there. So it's yeah, I think that's fine. Why don't we ha go ahead and do that um, for maybe a week or two and uh, just see what happens. And uh, I, I think it's appropriate. That's fine. Okay. So let's try to get back on track here. Uh, you know, did you, um, should I finish up the... Yes, please. And we'll try to get to these other items. We're gonna let's see. need some more time, so go ahead. I think that's it. I, on, on new business, I'll cover some, some additional items too on some of the things that we're doing in public works that I'd like to, the committee to know about. And also the um, uh, proposed new volunteer day that Denise Gilbert is working on coming up December 3rd uh, under new business. Yeah, we'll talk about that under new business. Great, thank you, Howard. Any questions for Howard before we move on? I, I have one. Howard, can you give us an update on the uh, Alpine Hills cross, Tennis Club crosswalk and the Priory crosswalk since we're now eight months away from June 2023? Yeah, we're, we're still doing uh, the same. It's pretty much the pre, uh, preliminary engineering uh, on those items. Would you say, is it fair to say we're still on track for June, 2023? Uh, I believe so. I think the target date was just uh, uh, the summer of 2023. The only things uh, that have a question mark on them is when we take them to the public. Those are the items that, that uh, the gray area that we haven't, that we'll have to determine. Uh, things that if, if it has to go to some review body, but uh, other than that, we're, 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 we're on schedule on our uh, uh, engineering uh, plans. Okay, and also I think you were going to tell us or figure out the best way to let the committee know where we stand in terms of money spent from our 20. 22 slash 2023 budget versus actuals for you uh, for the for, for public works i mean for the trail part for the trail budget i don't have that right now but i can get that to you afterwards is that okay yeah i think it was just for the whole committee i think last month we were talking about because we you know presented the priority changes that i i know probably alex is going to talk about um for safe routes to schools are our, our physical suggested changes. And we were gonna kind of see, well, where are we with our budget anyway, kind of thing. So, okay. if, yeah. If, uh, towards the end of the meeting, I can, I can come up with that and I can uh, revisit that towards the end of today's meeting. Is that okay? Look good with me. Gary, you're muted. Okay, sorry. Caroline, you need to unmute. You have your hand up. Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Um, I was wondering if Howard could give an update on the tree removal on a Portola Road, I believe. It's, um, I don't know if exactly there's a Portola Trail there that a lot of people walk and, and a lot of bikes use that, that area. Um, it's been brought up several meetings, even town council. So I was hoping that Howard has an update on this. Thank you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm assuming you're uh, referring to the large redwood tree that was discussed to be potentially to be removed on Patola and Brookside, correct? I think you're muted, Caroline. Looks like you're still muted. I, I can't unmute you at my end. You'll need to unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Yes, Howard, that's the tree. Um, that is a public safety issue. Thank you. So the the progress to date is that it went to the BBTS and the Conservation Committee and they didn't show any oppositions. So the next steps was to get quotes and I have gotten a couple of quotes for the, for the tree removal. And I've also touched bases with the uh, 
um, the homeowner. Uh, so the requester, uh, where we are right now is that the requester uh, added some, wanted some additional scope uh, in addition to removing the trees, really grinding the stump. Um, and there could be some uh, requirements of changing the retaining wall because the tree trunk itself is so close to the rock retaining wall there. Um, and the homeowner I've been in discussions with has some input into that. So that's where we are right now. The next step is really for me to send out a letter notifying everyone within 300 feet of the work that the work is going to be happening. Um, and if there's anything, any comments to, to get back to me. But at this point, we got quotes. And once we clear, uh, get no comments within 300 feet, clear conversations with the adjacent homeowner, uh, then we will execute a contract to remove the tree. And Howard, Wait, thank this, you. Uh, thank you, Caroline. And Howard, will this result in a trail closure? No, it'll result, it's two, three days worth of work. Uh, it is a curve and we're gonna have to use equipment on there. So it, it's gonna be traffic control all day, uh, day, a day and a half. Um, but it would, should not result in any trail closure. The trail is across the street from this location. Got it. Okay, thank you very much for that, Howard. And there may be some intermittent as I mean, it's 150, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very tall redwood tree. Uh, so there may be traffic controls that intermittently stops traffic, including trail traffic for a moment to lower limbs down safely. Okay, good. Thank you for that, Howard. Okay, uh, Christy, you have your hand up real quick. Morning. Good morning. Um, yes, I'm still concerned about the crosswalk across from Alpine Swim and Tennis. As you know, I live across the street and we're still waiting for uh, better safety at that crosswalk. We've been waiting for three years. Uh, we have the funds, and I guess we're still in a dangerous situation for some people crossing. And I just want you all to still know that. And then I had an issue raising my hand, and so I clicked uh, reactions a lot, and then all of a sudden I could raise my hand. So I don't know who's controlling the hands, but um, I also was not able to click the... Um, it wasn't a live link in the calendar for me, although Craig says it could be on my end, but last night I was able to get on open space committee by clicking, but this morning's meeting, I cannot click from the calendar. So um, just trying to figure all this out. And uh, I am concerned about safe routes to school and uh, that's it, thank you. Thanks, Christy. Okay, um, there's no more comments for Howard. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we got a state of the schedule here. Um, under old business, uh, item number B, Alpine Trail, Safe Routes to School Committee update. Um, I'm gonna actually start with this one because I wasn't here last time and I had an action item um, on Hillbrook Trail. And um, I don't see, is Jacqueline still here or? Do we have some sorry. No, okay. So I don't know who might want to present if if we want to present, but um uh, Jacqueline's the uh, nine eight five zero number, I think. Okay, great. <laughs> hi, hi, Jacqueline. hi, Gary. Gary, sorry. yeah, just real quick. I know, unfortunately, guys, I just pulled up to a, a doctor's appointment I scheduled a long time ago, so I'm on for about five more minutes, and then I, I do. Okay, then why don't, why don't you go first, off, Jack? But... Why don't you go first if you have anything to add? Well, sure. You know, we, I talked to Alex last night. He actually has, um, we're kind of all, I think, aligned. He has a brief presentation to run through. So I'm not sure that, I, but sure. I mean, on that one note, um, as far as Hillbrook, maybe this is what you were about to say, but I, you know, our, our hope is to, and uh, request would be that we do move forward with that as a safe route to school. Um, you know, any, all previous resolutions since 2000 have pointed to that. Um, anyway, and Gary, you can talk more about your thought around kind of binding it with ours, but I guess that's the only kind of new item um, that might have to be discussed today that I'm not going to able to be a part of, but otherwise I'll let Alex run with sharing our updated map. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for that information, Jacqueline. And yeah, I'll start real quickly. Um, we had an action item to try to 
discover the Hillbrook trail easements. And we were successful in doing so. Thank you to, to Jacqueline and Howard helping to work on that. Um, you know, these easements back from 1959 are just exactly that, easements from 1959. They really don't look at all like easements look today when you, when you get an easement uh, grant. Um, so it, it's outside of uh, certainly my expertise, and I think it's outside of the Trails and Pass Committee purview to, to try to um, interpret or, or decipher these easements into what usage you know, are, are really permitted. So I think we need um, guidance from, from council and, and council's research uh, or, or, or resources uh, in order to do that. So um, I've asked Howard to look into that with Craig, and, and I imagine at some point they'll have information to bring back to the committee on that. Um, so we'll, we'll just leave that one in a holding pattern unless they have anything to add today. And then Salsal Trail, I did some research on it last night, and it looks like Salsal Trail is going to be okay. Um, Salsal Trail um, along the road is in the road right of way easement, and so the town has jurisdiction there, I believe. And then when it connects um, over to Georgia Lane and it crosses those private properties, it's doing so on an actual private road easement that was granted back in 1951. And then again, in 1979, when I, either a subdivision was done or, or something was done, they produced a new uh, map. And that map carved the private road into two separate easements, a, a bicycle and pedestrian easement and an equestrian easement. So I, I think we're gonna be good for safe routes to school on Salsal from Salsal Drive all the way through to Georgia Lane. So I think we can take that one off the conflict map, which is good. Now um, I'm gonna uh, circle back with Howard on this. So we're gonna need a little time just to make sure what I'm seeing is, uh, is what Howard's seeing and we're all in agreement there. Um, and, and then we can move on. So really, I think it's boiling down to just uh, Hillbrook Trail. And we'll wait for the, the information from Howard and, and Craig on that when, when they have that. Um, so I suggest we just stay in a holding pattern on safe routes to schools for one more month, uh, get that information on Hillbrook, and then, and then make a determination of what our final map and resolution will look like. So, uh, and then to Jacqueline's point, you know, the resolution um, from 2001 and 2007, I, I think what I take away from that is that the town was very interested in, in um, safe routes to schools on Hillbrook and on Salzl. And that's, that's meaningful data, but then we also have learned that it's in conflict, potentially in conflict with the easement. So um, there, I think the best thing we can do to right now is when we do make our recommendations to the council, maybe we give them a couple options. We're gonna include in that recommendation, not just the map and the, um, and the resolution, we're gonna include a report that, that Craig has asked for that will, I think, um, uh, allow the entire council to come up to speed on what we're doing and what we're finding out and what some of our concerns and issues are. So I'm gonna work on that report over the next month. And then uh, when we get information back from Craig and Howard, I think then at that point, we'll be ready to submit. Um, one of the things we might wanna consider doing is if we are gonna pull Hillbrook in, that we somehow really restrict it um, in a way that um, really minimizes any exposure. But I'm, the more I think about that, the more it, it, it troubles me because I, I just, not comfortable advising the town to do something that I know is in conflict with an easement. I mean, my mantra has always been, you know, respect the easements because that's why, why we have trails. And so uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm still very much on the edge on this, but um, I'll think about it some more over the next month. And with the input from Craig and, and Howard, that might become moot anyway. So, and then lastly, I'll say, I've been thinking about a way to change these trail easements um, that would be quick and inexpensive because really that's where I think we get tripped up. Say, say we wanted to change the use of uh, a Hillbrook trail to allow safe routes to school legally. So it's legally done and no committee uh, behind us will ever have to deal with it again. No council will ever deal with it again. It's, it's, there's, there's some 
hope there. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to continue to work on that. And, and probably when I have conversations with, with Craig and Howard, um, they'll have some thoughts on it too. So I think just as a long-term goal, it's it's a good thing to be looking at. Uh, I think over time, we're going to be continuing, we're going to be continued to ask uh, to change the usage of trails uh, to, to allow safe routes to school and maybe more. So uh, having that in our pocket is going to be important at some point down the road. So those are the only comments I had. Uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Alex now for his presentation. Um, um, my. <laughs> I share my screen check and block them. Uh, it says I have to rejoin Zoom <laughs> for it to work. Um, so give me, sorry, give me one second. Let me reload this. Um, I have a, a, a quick question. When a safe routes to school route, um, will that change the ability for horses to ride on those trails? No, no it, it, it doesn't change anything. It just essentially um, <clears throat> allows children on bicycles to use that trail to get to and from school um, as, as the ultimate goal. Um, and Liz, Liz, are you able to share on yours so I don't have to drop out? To that point, Joe, um, it was- sure. let, me try, let me try. Yeah, it was always the intent of the town to put safe routes to school trails on trails that already permitted bikes. So uh, when the program was first started, they didn't want to. Um... Sorry, can I interrupt for one second? If you're ready, go ahead. I, I'm not ready. I need. So, Alex, can you email me the updated presentation then? Oh, yeah. Because um... I think everybody can see my screen, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Gary, you keep talking. Alex okay. is going to update me to give me the update, and then I can share it. Yeah. So from the very onset of this program, Joe, it was um, the case that horses and um, bicycles were already coexisting on these trails. We were just marking them so the kids would know what trails that we considered safe routes for them to get to school. Okay. Um, that's kind of changed a little bit. There's uh, these resolutions that we saw and there's this desire to put kids on Hillbrook Trail and on Salsal Trail. Well, Salsal, I think we figured out, but Hillbrook Trail, we haven't. And so the, the challenge there is, can we safely and legally put kids on Hillbrook Trail alongside horses? Uh, and, and I think that's still the, the big question we're trying to answer. Okay. So let's say if we start on slide five, um, we can, we just kind of move down quickly. So this this is the map that's live right now, um, and it, and so if if we move down uh, one more, um, to, <clears throat> so this is our initial presentation uh, where we kind of zoomed in the view and highlighted the the actual trail system, um, and then we spoke to a lot of people, including the committee on slide seven here. Uh, that we got feedback. Um, from, from all these folks, uh, the schools, principals, um, the committee, and then there's a student liaison to our subcommittee uh, who uses the trails to get to school. Um, and so we kind of compiled a list of things to update. Um, and so we kind of covered this whole list um, and there were, there were suggestions to add points of interest, which we, we did a couple for parks, but we didn't want to get it too complicated because the focus is really like safe routes to school. Um, and then we also uh, removed the bus stops from the map that's live right now um, for a couple reasons. Um, one is that if someone's riding the bus to school, they're not necessarily using the trails, and so it's a distraction. And then um, the school said that the buses are actually changing their service based on low ridership, um, and so it was just uh, creating... Um, a, a potential information on the map that's that's not useful for the the goal of the map um and then uh there's there's some feedback about zooming out to show more of the town but there's some uh distance <laughs> like suggestions in the official safe house of school uh, documentation 
that the, uh, everything should be within about uh, two miles. Um, and so we're like less than that on some sides and more than that on others, depending on which school you're headed to. Um, but it was, it was kind of like a, a close enough view that people can figure out which trails connect and get closer to the schools. Um, and then uh, we made another list of updates. And there's still some questions, obviously, which is why <laughs> we're bringing it back uh, to the committee um, like on Valley Oak um, and things like that. And then we changed some wording here. Uh, we, we had kind of copied the wording from the live map, but now it's the safe routes to schools uh, using town trails and paths. Um, so people know what the goal of the map is when they look at it. Um, and then can we go to the next uh, slide? <clears throat> yeah, and so so this is the newly updated map. Um, and so you see, we've we've added a bunch of, uh, footpaths in uh, that can that can bring you down uh, to the main corridors that we showed on the the original update. Um, and if we go one more slide, um, this is this kind of highlights all, what all those changes were. Um, and uh, essentially, the goal here <laughs> was to to show the the map uh, for children and families of the best way for them. To get to school in the morning and get home after school um and and that uh, it, it includes trails from the neighborhoods because uh the, the original map only kind of showed how to get from one school to another or to the library um and so this is this is more in line with the the goal of like get from your house to your school um and then um yeah so, so all the schools now are one color instead of two colors um and uh, we 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 simplified it so there's really only two trail types at this point. Um, uh, there's pedestrians and equestrians, um, and then there's the ones that allow bicycles as well. So, um, and we have we have the 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 question at hand um, in in regards to Hillbrook. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, um, it seemed to be like it should be part of the safe routes to school. But Gary, you're you're working on finding answers to that. Um, with Craig and Howard, and we ultimately said it's not really up to us. <laughs> and as far as far as we can tell, that that is a a good use for that trail, um, and it seems like an in, potentially intended use. So we have it on there, um, and that's up up for adjustment depending on what uh, the, everyone says. Um, and then there's one note, an, an error we we realized after the presentation was already put together. The uh, crosswalk at uh, Alpine Hills it was accidentally left off because we updated the coloring per feedback so they were more obvious, um, and that one just didn't make it back on. But we know it needs to go there. Um, and yeah, that that's it. If there's any questions, um, I, I think that should cover it. <clears throat> I have uh, one quick question, Alex. Did you guys look at the section of Westridge Trail from Possum down to Portola? Um, like physically on the ground? Well, uh, I, if I recall, the resolution actually allowed bikes on that trail. Oh, but potentially. We, yeah, but, we, but the map doesn't. Okay. It's, in, it's in a road right away easement, so the town could <laughs> designate that section of Westridge Trail um, as it yeah. desires. However, we get lots of feedback about when bikes are on that trail because signs say no bikes. Yeah. Uh, because there's that steep hill there right by Possum um, that it's, it's really not a good bike to, uh, trail to put bikes on. And I kind of agree with that. Okay. So, so I don't know what we'll do with the resolution. We can, we can talk about that um, next, but um, I'm, I'm, feeling that we should probably not include that on safe routes to school. And it looks like you haven't. No, no, yeah. It, uh, I, I'm, that's, I'm not super familiar with that section of, of the trail, so. It, it, would be, it would be a great route for kids to get to Portola from that area there. I mean, they'd, they'd have to ride in the road till they got to Possum, and then they could hop on the trail. But I think almost every equestrian would just, you know, really oppose putting bikes on that section of trail because of the physical features there. Yeah, yeah. and I think the, the especially like with with Hillbrook and then potentially this, um, the, the, the question is, 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 is from, for the, for the 
20 minutes of, of the kids commute <laughs> is it worth blocking that access um, yeah but I don't, again safe, safety wise i'm not familiar with that so but that's a question we can so i know that trail really well that's the area that just past that is the one i'm telling the trucks are parked on the trail the whole time right. and that area right at possum you you can't it's not only horses it's equestrians it's so narrow it's like a little chute yeah. So there's no way a, if a bike comes up over the hill, who's ever on the other side is going to get taken out. Plus which, I, on the other end of it, it's stairs. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, if we want to include that, we'd have to make that a multi-use trail somehow. That, that, that's, yeah. that's I, 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 can I also just jump in? Like, I think we should like zoom out and think about the big picture here. If you're funneling kids to Ormondale, that's probably not Where they're gonna go anyway. a section of trail that would be you great. Uh, you don't need it if you're funneling kids to Corte Madera, which is probably the most of this. Like going Shawnee, Iroquois, Georgia Lane, Portola is a much better. It is yeah. for those kids. So I, per, per, per Barb's comment that there are stairs at the end of it uh, that you probably don't want kids going down into Portola uh, towards Portola Road, and then we actually have good routes. And I think part of this is we need to think about this is this does encourage certain flows. Um, and I think that I, I would advocate avoiding pushing people onto Portola Road right there yeah. or Portola Trail. That makes sense. Yeah, great feedback. I, so yeah, I'm glad you guys have thought that through and I, I uh, respect your opinions. So it sounds like we'll leave that off safe route to school. And I, I also really like your concept of, of routes and, and routing kids into the safest um, trails, uh, as opposed to necessarily the shortest route uh, to school. So I, I'm very supportive of that. Um, that's all the questions I have. Good job. Uh, Liz, do you have anything to add? Because I know you're kind of like shifted mm -hmm. off. Yeah. You're a huge part of this. So <laughs> I just want to. <laughs> uh, yeah. So hopefully everybody saw, okay, we took all your feedback. We made our decisions based on it. Alex showed the final map. Um, you know, we can talk about a resolution. It sounds like we, we want to hold then, Gary, on the next step to get this to the town council um, for approval for public distribution. I guess we're a little unclear, like does, does there need to be a public review of this before the town council might rule on it or what so that's one question and another question i had personally was we need to update the town website related to safe routes to schools so because where would this even go you know right now there's this tiny little link to to the to, to the current map so that's another thing that we need to get done if you will so i don't know alex if you were planning to talk about that uh, no, I wasn't, but it's a, I think it's a good question. We we brought up the website issue um, a couple of meetings ago, and I absolutely agree to you. When we're when we're done with these efforts, we need to, as part of the process of posting them, work with Melissa or Carrie or whoever the person right person is to reorganize because a lot of our stuff is under the uh, um, the open. Um, uh section for uh open parcels open land uh, open space as opposed to being under the trail section so i agree that has to be completely redone so uh i would assume that we will do that as part of the process of posting these new maps um and then what was your first question sleep deprivation oh so, uh, kind of next steps right so yeah. we so had this, sort of in our right so this is a public hearing it's on our agenda the public has an opportunity to comment on our work so from our perspective we're, we're, we're accomplishing that right now um, our next meeting it will also be on the agenda another opportunity for uh, people to, to comment on it once we make our recommendations to the council it's out of our hands it goes into their process they may choose to put it on their um, consent agenda or they may choose to have public discussion about it that's completely up to them so we'll, we'll leave that up to them um, and then in terms of uh, process you know how does this ultimately get approval 
Um, that is done by action at the, the town council, either by accepting the uh, item on the consent calendar or uh, approving it via roll call as a normal action item. And Craig, does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, and on consent, it would be by roll call too. I mean, it, it just, it's combined with, it's one vote on multiple items if it's on consent, but yes, generally so. Um, and then it sounds like there's also probably some direction to staff to follow up with updates to the website and maybe, you know, working with the subcommittee to change things as needed there. So let's put it this way, Gary. I, I think the subcommittee uh, feels that the map is ready. Like we, we've taken everybody's feedback, including this committee. We put it in there. The only issue now, I think, is Hillbrook. We show it based on best, as Alex always says, which I love, you know, based on the best information we have today, we're showing Hillbrook as a multi-use for the Safe Routes to School map. Um, so we think the map's ready to go to approval with the town council. Now, I know it doesn't, it's not married to a resolution, which would be the other committee. And when we're ready to talk about that, if we still have time, we can. But so, I get the, the subcommittee is asking like, okay, check, we, we did this part. Yeah, you, you guys are almost done. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep <laughs> your subcommittee in existence until this gets approved, but I don't see many more action items for you guys. I think you're right. The only other issue is, is Hillbrook and hopefully we can get that resolved at our next meeting. Um, is, and we'll wait, I guess we'll get an update from the map uh, subcommittee next, but uh, the resolution probably is almost in a similar state. So I think we're in really good shape. We just need to get Hillbrook resolved. Um, so it sounds like uh, you, when you and Craig and Howard kind of figure that out at that point, we'll, we'll be able to take it forward. Yeah, and that, that's going to be up to their schedule. I, I can't set any prior priorities for Howard and, and Craig. Um, they have a lot of stuff on their plate, but when they do get it and they're ready to present, I will put that on our agenda. What what I might suggest, just I'm, I'm thinking of from an efficiency point of view, it, it might, I, I don't know if you can do two maps, you know, one with Hillbrook and one without Hillbrook on it, and then you don't have to do that work again. I mean, it's just, I, I imagine in your mapping software, it's just, you just turn off that segment. Yeah. Um, then, you know, we'll have both maps. We can work through what we need to at the council level and with staff and figure out whether or not Hillbrook is allowed. If it is allowed, we'll use the version that has Hillbrook on. And if it's not allowed, then we'll just take that one off. And, and then, you know, either way we have the map done and, and this committee doesn't need to revisit it again after we've figured that out. Um, and, and then I, I think, you know, we could post it on the website and, and have Carrie work with the subcommittee to, there's probably a, you know, a bit of a blurb you want to put on the webpage that links to it, that describes it and t tells people how to do it and links to whatever else. And we could have Carrie work with the subcommittee to iron that stuff out. So that's yeah, we need idea. to get it marketed. We need to get it marketed to parents. Exactly. Yeah. And Cool. So, so, so what I would suggest then is if you if you send, you know, whatever resolution you have along with the, you know, option A or option B maps to the council, um, and then, you know, staff can write up a memo about whatever the legal issues are around the easement on Hillbrook, and then the council can, you know, choose option A or option B, and then it's done. Yeah, so we would need a, a similar uh, set of resolutions, one resolution to map matched one map and one resolution that matched the other map, which I, I think is also pretty easy to do. Yeah, it's just you delete one bullet point in the, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. That's a great idea. That will help us move forward quickly then. So then it looks like I need to get that report done. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Copy the two maps and then leave it in your hands. Okay, great. That, that sounds great. Um, it looks like we have a couple of hands up. I guess real quick, we'll take some comments. We got to get back on track, Barb. Can I just say one thing? Do we Please. do? Does the does the whole committee need to vote on this at some point when the subcommittee brings it to you? That's all. Oh, yeah. I think so. Um, so at our next meeting, you know, we would have that resolution. We'll put it as part of our meeting package. We'll have the maps. We'll put that as part of our meeting package so the public can see it. We'll have discussion. We'll have public comment, and then we'll vote. Great question. Uh, Caroline, do you have a question? Your hand is up still. 
Yes, I, I do. Um, thank you very much for that updated map. It's, it's great. Um, and, and thank you for pushing this action. Um, I was hoping that I still could uh, bring up a concern and it's, um, it's by Alpine Hills, but it's at the end of Fire Torn. Um, kids use, when they go from school, they use Fire Torn Lane to go to Alpine and that's where they get picked up uh, by their parents or uh, continue to have like uh, some sports activities there. Um, and so what happens is they avoid the crossing, the legal crossing. They just follow uh, the path directly, the shortcuts actually from uh, Fire Torn Lane to uh, cross uh, Los Troncos. Nice. Because that intersection, like what Christy was mentioning was the other one, the, the, the crosswalk that crosses Alpine Lane. I'm talking about the crosswalk of Los Troncos and, and the habits that kids have done. So there needs to be education or we need to do something to make that much safer. Um, yeah, that's about it. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope you can include that. Okay, thanks, Caroline. Uh, Alex, do you, do you want to touch on that at all? Um, no, I, I mean, I'm familiar with that intersection. I'm not familiar with student behavior <laughs> at, the, at that point, at that point. So I, I don't have to. I would say if I could interrupt, um, I don't, I appreciate your comment, Caroline. It's just Liz. I don't think so you're saying that changes the map at all. Am I understanding you correctly? It sounds like you're talking about education. The map shows, which I just put up on the screen and then I stopped sharing. I mean, the map you know, shows what's pedestrian and what's bike. I can put it up there again, but this sounds like an education usage issue again, where, you know, or signage or whatever, where, but not a change to the proposed final safe route to school map. Do I, do I, am I understanding your comment correctly? Yes, you do. But, but okay. it, it's a concern that I've raised several times and I, it, it, it has to be brought up. So it, yes, nothing changes your map. I just wanted to- Okay, so it sounds like it's concern. potentially a similar sort of um, temporary signage issue like the previous one we discussed with um, Alpine Trail and or you know, we've really got to roll that into our educational marketing plan to parents and children, kind of as part of this whole Alpine Trail issue where people are not, are, you know, not riding on the paved paths, which are for bikes. So yeah. can we be clear about what the actual issue is? Is the concern crossing from fire, cr crossing Firethorn, crossing Los Trancos Road into the back part of Alpine Hills? Is that the concern? Yes. Okay, um, I, I I think we probably need to refer that to like the bicycle and pedestrian safety committee because um, this map actually will encourage people not it, it encourages the use of Alpine corridor down Alpine to Alpine Trail. There's nothing in the map that encourages this. I, I'm not sure exactly what this committee will do with respect to this. This is. We, we don't we don't typically sort of give guidance on where people should go and cross roads. Um, it feels just out of scope of what our work is. Yeah, I think you're right, Fred. By virtue of showing what routes are safe, we're also saying which routes we do not recommend. And if it's not on the safe routes to school, it is not recommended. Um, so I think that will really be what we could do to address this, uh, Caroline. And then uh, Fred suggested to get to BPTS is probably a very good idea because if they are crossing a road, there are purview ends at the curb. If they are crossing the road in a place they're not supposed to be, then I'm sure Ed and, and company would, would want to get all over that. So um, something to bring up with them. Um, and then this begs the question, I'm glad you brought the comment up, Caroline, uh, should we have our marketing and educational program ready when we submit to the town or, or, or are we okay with the, the, the town approving everything, getting it up on the website and then moving forward with the marketing plan? How do you guys see that working? Uh, we've, we, we've thought as distinct, you know, they don't need to be married and delay one another. Um, we had high hopes in the past of, you know, meeting the beginning of the school year. <laughs> um, 
So that's fine. Uh, let's get that map approved, get it up and, you know, get it. Like, I think we can all be on the entire committee. We should all be evangelists and ambassadors of the Safe Routes to School map because we all know families, et cetera. And then Gary, we can use your knowledge of, of the school board and, and sort of marketing. And then we, we have kind of lines into the different principals and we want to get on, you know, into their, like, it'd be wonderful, for example, if the Safe Routes to School map was also on the Ormondale School Portal website and the Cormadera School Portal website and it was the map that was distributed at parents' night at the preschools, you know, whatever. So there's lots of little tentacles related to the marketing plan that I, I, I don't think we'd want to hold up getting the map on the website, you know. For. Yeah, but well, when it's time, um, I'm happy to have that discussion. Uh, there's lots of uh, ways the school communicates information out to the community and to parents, and we can take advantage of all of those uh, as we see appropriate. Um, I, I have no problem doing that at full committee level. So maybe for our next meeting, we'll put it on the agenda and we'll have uh, suggestions and comments. Uh, and I can bring some from the school's perspective and then we'll enumerate all those and and uh, and get, get that all in part of the, put it into the plan, I guess is the, timing is another issue. I don't know when <coughs> we wanna pull the trigger on some of this stuff, but, I guess we just start by getting the plan together of what we're going to do, and then we'll decide the, the when part of it. Okay, great. So um, let's move on. I don't see any other hands up uh, to the PB trail map update. I know we kind of been in and out of some of those topics already. Do we want to have any format update there? We know the map is ready. Yeah, we, we are ready. I'm, I'm just going to show. Um, okay, so I shared my screen previously. Was that good for everybody? Okay, great. So here, let me just share again. So here's where we are. <clears throat> Sorry, I go here. Oh, okay. Okay. Ba -ba -da -da. So we have the huge thank yous due to Dave Evans, who helped us create the new, um, let me zoom out here, the new public draft trail map. And um, it's a PDF, which would go up on the um, town website. And as you can see, you can zoom in, which is so awesome and get detail. Okay. And we are presenting it to you today as a subcommittee. Um, Cause you know, we want you guys to, I would distribute this afterwards, a link it's up on our shared Google drive. Uh, we want to get all your feedback. Um, you know, obviously there's still a few issues like Hillbrook and what we you know, have discussed before, Valley Oak, et cetera. So, uh, but we want to, we think it's ready to start getting the full committee's feedback. Um, lots of, you know, we walked every single trail, then we had him map it. He had LIDAR, he had all types of other documents and data and we, we zoomed it all together, or he did, and created this beautiful, beautiful map that's got elevation visuals, it's got, um, if I go down to the legend, the different colors are related to who kind of manages those um, areas. And then on the left here, pedestrian, equestrian, pedestrian, equestrian, bicycle, pedestrian only, and, and then informal connectors. Also note, Howard, we have here, <clears throat> if you have a problem with the trail, use PV Connect. Um, we also have the Westridge um, nomenclature that has to be on here related to the fact that, you know, we're using those trails pursuant to their civil code, et cetera. So that's the beautiful, there are a couple of things I noticed. There's a couple of trail issues, naming issues in the town center trails and things. But anyway, we're like so incredibly excited to distribute this to everybody to get start getting your feedback. Um, so if, uh, I'm going to show you one other thing, and then if you guys all agree, I'll, I'll distribute this after the after the meeting. And you would download it to your phone and start walking your trails like Joe asked us to last meeting, and use this. I've been using it for you know several months now, and it's like, oh yeah, okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what happens, et cetera. So hopefully, if you use this to walk your trail and as your as a trail ambassador, you would see that and you would give us any feedback that needs to change. And then related, we have this database that we've been developing of all the trails 
and we'd like to give you access to it. And this would be the, would form the chart that would become the resolution, which is part of the appendix and the resolution, our addendum and the resolution um, for the town council. So it would have every trail listed here on the left, column A. And then it goes through the neighborhood, whether it's off-road or street. And then we put in what on the old public map, the usage and the new one that I just showed you what's changed. And we've tried to highlight the, for easy, ease of use, kind of what's changing. So you guys can say like, oh, oh, you changed Cherokee. Okay, let me look at that, that kind of thing. So that's column F and G. H is who's managing it. I is who on a, a, of us is supposed to be walking that trail. Um, and then J, K and L, are kind of interesting too. J is, uh, it has an X for any trail that is not on the current public map. Okay. K is anything that's not on Howard's list. Okay. So that would be interesting to look at. L is anything that's not on the 2007 resolution. M would be changes recommended to the resolution. And then we try to start putting in links to easements or parcel maps that we, you know, have been given and I uploaded to um, the shared drive. And then a little bit on signage, but we have a separate, um, there's a separate uh, Google sheet for that that Joe's now gonna manage. So, so I would give you guys, we would, the subcommittee would give everybody in the entire committee access <coughs> to read this this um, document as well. And that would help you to provide feedback on this public map and help us create the addendum that would become part of the resolution. So that's the scoop. Liz okay. Elliott, can I ask you a question? Um, on Willowbrook, there is a connector trail. It's unofficial, it's a private easement somebody an owner there once closed it off many years ago and it leads from willowbrook to alpine can you show me willowbrook and does that trail show because it, as i it said does. if this is i just pulled okay it up, there is, is I, that it have there it right yeah yellow that's here it. yeah okay so you're it's not showing as an informal connector okay maybe it's best that way you know we have thought of uh trying to uh, contact all the owners but there are a bunch of them and we just thought uh, better let sleeping dogs lie in case one of them says, no, I don't want this uh, part of the town trail. So, okay, that's fine. If you've just uh, let it be like that. All right. Yeah, Thank that's you. that's the kind of feedback we want. Like there's informal connector there. If I move over, um, over to, uh, if I can figure out how to do this on the screen, uh, over on where I live in the Highlands, there's a lot of informal connectors. See that over here? Um, all right, it's hard to hard to adjust here, but um, <clears throat> going, going from what trail to what trail? Sorry, so over here on the far left, Larry Lane, Hay Forks, Herb right. Bangler, and Joan Tard. You see these little yellow? These are informal connectors that also I think you know. Okay. Uh, we'd love love people to look at. So anywhere where it wasn't a a known trail of Wask or Portola Valley. But it's walked all the time. Um, okay. Other data such as LIDAR and um, all trails and other things showed that people walk it all the time. Uh, we put it in as these informal connectors. So okay. I think that's um, appropriate for our own usage. Uh, in terms of a public trail map, I, I don't think we'll end up including those because we really, we can't. But here's the rationale, like here's the rationale to include them, is that we're trying to help people when they're on the ground understand where they are and map what they see on the ground to what the map shows. So part of that is, you know, the usage is reflected by prioritize that what the sign says over anything else right now. And the reason to include it is so if someone finds themselves, say, trying to get from Sausal up towards that Veronica area and they're sort of going up and they're not staying on Sausal Trail, they could look at the map and they could understand actually where they are and what this what this is. Um, and I would argue that it, 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 if someone doesn't want folks walking there, it's incumbent on them 
to put up a sign to stop for what Ellie was just talking about, that informal connector. But the map should help people understand where they are. And if we leave those off, it's just going to lead to confusion. No, I think they should be left on, just not named. And just as Liz has it there, it's sort of informal. Then you may need to qualify it with that, you know, no public access. Because we, we can't put on a public map and encourage the public to trespass on private property. Right. Yeah. We can't do that. So if you say no public access, then maybe you've accomplished that. But I have a feeling what, ha what will happen is if you put that on there, then people are going to say, hey, that's not a trail. And they're going to go close. No public access, we say something like informal connectors are subject to the, you know, the landowner granting access. Well, I think no, no public access is better. Yeah, I think you got to say. No well, let me give you an example, though, uh, again, playing devil's advocate, like right here. Can you guys see? Do you guys see my cursor? Yeah. They... OK, you, you can't. OK, so right here in in um, the Larry Lane Hay Forks area where I've got this informal connector from this wayside right here. Right. Um, and the the person who lives right here, she put up a huge sign that says trail this way. Right, because everybody she said kept asking, yelling through her window. Because I asked about it, where's the trail? Where's the trail? So she put up a big sign. Literally, she wanted it there that said, "Trail this way." Um, so I, I don't, I don't think we should assume that every person that lives near an informal connector doesn't want it noted. Um, and, it, it, and that's fine, uh, but again, unless there's an easement there, you have no right directing public onto that private property. Even if I the agree. property owner wants it done, then the property owner should grant an easement to the town so they don't have liability. But if I, we put people on private property without a published or a accepted trail there, without a trail easement there, then they have liability. Someone could get hurt on that private property and then turn around and sue that private property owner. And what if the home changes ownership too? Yeah, so so I, I like where you're going with this, Liz, that, hey, that's actually a trail that people want to formalize. So let's formalize it. Let's get them to grant us an easement or find out if there's an easement there already. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds to me like we can satisfy it by saying uh, not, not for public use. And then what Fred's good point is, is that if a person find, finds himself there, at least they know where they're going and how to get out of there. Yeah, yeah, I would be comfortable with that. And then again, I would, you know, defer to the town because they're, they're going to have legal resources we don't have here. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we just, we can't direct the public onto private property. That's, that's just never going to be a, a good thing. Um, showing them on the trail map is likely to do that unless you say, you know, no, no public access. Well, if you think of the, there's those, there's the private trails below Sequoias and it says right on them, not a public trail. Right. And, and, and there's and a lot of And we don't have those on here. And we don't have those on there. Well, they're the, no. that would be the same as these informal trails. Can, can we, rather, right. than try, rather than trying to solution here, can we take this back to the committee to say, as is, the informal connector is not <coughs> muster with this committee and come back with some options? Because I, 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 I get what you're saying, but I don't know that we're going to solve it here. And I, unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave. Yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. fine. So I, that's, that's, I, that's a great example of the feedback we need. Okay, so if everybody's good, I'm going to send out the link to this PDF. You guys are going to download it and you have your homework and to do's for the month to, to walk your trails and see how what you think of this thing. Okay, and then I can also do people also want access to this Google list that will help form our resolution addendum or is that too much TMI? I would like it. Yeah, I'd like database. It. Okay. It's cool so I'll work. Send I mean, that's, you a link to that. That's very handy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can we just can we get some clarification? Like you can add comments in there. Are we gonna be in violation of the Brown Act by showing this shared document and I was gonna make it no, I actually didn't want people to put edits in here because it's really easy to screw it up and to like sort and not include every column and right. You know, so I would rather you guys will be view only. Is that okay? And then provide us feedback like, hey, that's wrong. You know, column J, row five, you guys have it wrong. 
I think that's the best way to do it, Liz. Otherwise, it's going to get a little out of hand and we won't have the history and so on. But um, yeah, I and I don't want I, I will put in the email, do not reply all. We're not yeah. starting an informal meeting. You're yeah, just, to just reply. Sharing, just sharing yeah. the data and then having people email you with the comments, I think, is fine from the Brown Act perspective. Um, and then we can make those comments public if you want at the next meeting. Just let send them to me, and we can include them. Um, Liz, just, just a suggestion: if you put everybody in BCC instead of CC, then they can't accidentally hit reply all. Good idea. I see you. Well, the other, the other, <laughs> you know, the other thing is the public is now seeing this, so if they want to comment, they can also comment because we're this meeting's being taped. Yeah, well, we're going to include the map in the package, though, when it's time to vote on it. That's the, right. the appropriate way to do but that. I mean, they can see everything we're talking about. So if they have comments or want to, you know, they're welcome. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, one other thing I would uh, ask the committee to think about is um, a list of approvals. So I would suggest that we run this map by Westridge and make sure they're OK with it. We run it by the ranch and make sure they are OK with it. Although I'm, I'm, I don't know how <laughs> to necessarily do that. Uh, I guess maybe um, Craig Sanders, whoever there, uh, or, or maybe Fred would know the right person to prove that. And then I don't know if we need Mid Pen to look at it because we're showing Mid Pen trails on there. Um, I, I just think about who we should probably have approve this before we send it to the town council for approval so that they know, and, and Westridge should certainly be one of them. And maybe Mary already has, I don't know, but, um, and I would suggest maybe the ranch and maybe Mid Penn. Um, what about Blue Oaks? Yeah, Blue Oaks, thank you, another one, right? Uh, just as a courtesy, I don't know that they could have any say in this really. Um, well, I would have thought that, that we would do that. I would, you know, this is, yes, as a courtesy in addition to, the, you know, public review. Yeah, public comment, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say that is an amazing map for you got that you guys have done. So thank you so much. We've been needing this for years and years and years, and I'm blown away that you guys actually have it done. Or cool. It's really cool. It's really cool to use on your hikes. It's it's really cool. Yeah, no disrespect to Dick Anderson. Um, I loved his hand-drawn maps, uh, but yeah, we're in a different <laughs> time. And I, I think I have a lot of uh, satisfied customers. The other beauty of it is it, it is in a um, it's in Adobe Illustrator, so it, it is in a um, like really well known package that you know we can easily update. <clears throat> Craig, yeah, go ahead. Liz, do you know if Dave has the GIS? Did he use it? Use GIS to generate? It is, the whole yeah. Thing? It'd be nice yep. to get the shape file to Howard or something too. Oh just well, so we I don't that. know. He didn't. He didn't use that software, but he used the data. Because yeah, but the, the use... data will be in some kind of okay. GIS format. So yes, yes, getting that yes, raw that. data to Howard would be useful because then if you're doing other things, like if you're looking at a particular lot and th things like that, you can overlay the data onto it and make it lined up and you can actually see where it runs and it would be very <laughs> useful to have that. Okay, I will check on that with Dave. And, um, you know, another thing that we sort of had in our back pocket that we don't have done yet, and I don't know what the appetite is here, but we wanted to take the, the GIS and the GPS raw data and get it into something that could be uploaded to something like an all trails or whatever people use yeah. um, so that you could, you could navigate from this thing. Would that not exactly. be awesome? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, yeah, if you have the GIS data, then you can start doing that. You can also, you can also tag parts of the GIS data with the data that you have in that spreadsheet too. So you have basically a map where if you click on a trail, it'll pull up the stuff from the spreadsheet. Yeah. The one thing we want to be really cognizant of that we were very careful um, in taking a lot of Howard's feedback is that this is not, you know, an engineering map. This is not a like, oh my God, that trail is shown, you know, within three feet of my, and that's wrong. And the easement says that, that this is not that. Right. Sorry, I, yeah, I, I, think, I have a cold, so I'm not expressing myself very well. But I just, I just want Howard. I don't want Howard's like heart rate to go up a bazillion things. It, it is not. We yeah. know this is not an engineer map. But I'm, I'm hoping we can use the GIS data as you know, part two of this project to produce a map that does show the parcel lines on there. 
um, for you know the the um, contract uh, planners. So they when they look at a project application, they can quickly determine if there's a trail on there or not. They're still kind of flying by the seat of their pants in that aspect. So we really want to help them. It doesn't have to be an engineered map that shows you know exactly where the trail is. What they really need to determine is if there is a trail on that parcel. Um, so we'll talk about that some more. I know that that's a potentially a bunch of extra work. And, and I recall you, you were specific that that was not going to be part of this. So I, I'm cool with all that. It's just that maybe now we've learned a lot. We can, we can try to help those folks out, um, make their job a little easier, uh, which will in turn help us because when they know there's a trail there, they route those applications to our committee for approval. Fred and I just uh, worked on one um, a little while ago. So uh, I'll put that on the agenda for our next meeting. We can just see what ideas we have, if that's okay. Yeah, um, that's that's okay. I, I really appreciate your acknowledgement, though, that yeah, that this the the goals of this subcommittee were, were not to create that. Yeah, and that's that's accepted. Okay, um, we're running a little low on time. We still have a quorum here. Um, under new business, um, a couple of things. Uh, I want to mention that Howard um, found some really cool old trail um, uh, maps that were done by Spangler, Spangle, Spangler, <laughs> uh, by George Mader and Tom Blasick back in 1969, I think the date is. And what they had done was they must have had the easements in front of them because they took a set of the neighborhood um, maps, uh, parcel maps, and they drew in where they thought the trail easements were. So we have those, and we're going to get those scanned and then make them available to the trails committee to look at. A lot of interesting stuff in there. I found, you know, that that uh, segment on the wedge. Uh, um, we found the one on Grove that uh, we've been looking at as part of a remodel project there. So there's a lot of good information to be gleaned from this. It's just clues because the easement grants themselves aren't included. But I want to make that known to the committee. And uh, once we have it scanned, we'll, we'll send out a link so everybody can start taking a look at it. And, and Liz, this might be right up your alley for um, historical database stuff. So just know that that's hanging out there. And then the other new business item, Howard mentioned there's a trail work day on the third in the ranch. Um, it's very similar to the last project they did that it's entirely on ranch property. Uh, there'll be ranch supervision there. And then of course, volunteers. Um, so really no difference. So I, I, I'm supportive of it. A little concerned about the date. They could run into some rain. We'll have to see how that works out. But uh, ultimately, it's up to Howard to review the scope of work. Um, but if you have any comments on that, uh, send them to Howard, um, because this is going to happen before our, our next meeting. Okay. Any other new business? Any reports? Any I was going to report out on the trail database, but I don't, I, I, if you want me to hold till next meeting, I can. No, go ahead. We, we can, we have a quorum. Okay. So I was supposed to, um, take, take a beat as they say these days and, um, come up with an idea, uh, of what the new potential subcommittee that was approved, um, would do. So here's my notes on it. Um, so this, I'm calling it the trails database. Okay, so took out the word historical because I really want this in my, my passion around this is moving forward. Um, the goal would be to create a tool to house data regarding the Portola Valley trail system for use by our committee. Things that the trails, that the tool should do, and this could later become a request for proposals from people to create this thing. It needs to be searchable, sortable, easily updatable, it's able to link to files, such as parcel maps and or include access to them. Easy to use and easy to keep the software updated. Like I don't want to, I really don't want to create like some proprietary system. You know, this needs to be like easy to use and updated so like, anybody can wipe in. So the tool should be able to answer Liz, you're breaking up a little bit. Maybe turn off your video. I don't know if that'll help. Probably because you're screen sharing. Okay, is that better? Yep, that's better. <laughs> okay. So the idea would be that the 
the tool could answer some things like, what is the background on a specific trail? How did it come into the Portola Valley Trail system? Who maintains it? Do we have an easement information or partial map data on areas of the specific trail? What were the discussions or decisions made in the past at committee meetings regarding the trail? This, these would not include any maintenance things, but it would be like, oh my God, you know, Mary Smith just donated such and such easement in 19, you know, 99 to this trail and here's the parcel map, et cetera. Um, past issues and agreements regarding a specific trail that occurred outside of a committee meeting, um, location of trail with coordinates so that you, we could pull it up really quickly when we're having discussions. Um, signage on the trail, we could have embedded images like, oh, okay, here's the sign that shows that. Um, and then in creating this tool, we would need to interview people, stakeholders, people that were suggested were Susan Gold, Ellie Ferrari, Mary Hufty, Howard Young, Nancy Lund, Craig Hughes, Alexis Weisinger, she was from the Green Infrastructure Design at our last meeting, Gary Hanning, Fred Leach. These would be people that I would interview and talk to about such a tool. Possible milestones for the subcommittee would be to interview these people to determine the scope of the tool, the description, the outline of what the tool would do, understand past ways of keeping track of all this information um, to the trail committee. It would, another milestone would be cre creating the request for proposal, getting the funding, creating it, training all of us to use it, and then starting to use it. What would be the subcommittee structure? I would be on it, and I'm thinking maybe one other person who has passion around this at the start to help me do these interviews. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Well, I'm okay with dropping the historical part of it, but um, it, there will have to be a lot I can't hear of... anybody. Oh. Can you hear me? Anybody, anybody else hear me? Can yep. hear me? I can't hear, hear Gary. Wait, I can't, I can't. Can you guys can hear me? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Good thing I wasn't talking to nobody. I can't hear Gary. Hold on. Nobody's talking right now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Uh, tone generator. Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn I have words. Words to my words speaker. Right. One second. <laughs> That'll be a bug in Zoom, right? You turn off your screen sharing and all of a sudden. <laughs> I hear you now. Okay, so what do you guys think of that description? So I, I think it's a great description. I'm okay with dropping the historical part of it because um, it, it, it is what it is. I'm not worried about that. A question to Howard and Craig. I mean, do you guys, are you comfortable with us like parallel, uh, keeping in parallel the easement information? I, I know that the town would probably want to keep that in, in whatever form or manner they they need or they, not, they want. Um, do we want to keep it in two different places? How, how do you see that working? I guess Craig is okay if I chime in. Um, I, I think this is useful information. Um, I think this is an IT issue where that can be resolved, where we have a central bank that eventually everyone can just dive into like a parcel file and find out about these things. It's I, I think with the town being so young, uh, a lot of this information, like for instance, the trails when they're first given to us are typically given by like a deeded by subdivision map when someone builds a new subdivision or builds a new home. And right now those things are placed in an archive box or some kind of planning files. Um, in particular here, in this case, you know, when Spangle was here, they probably had all that information. So I'll have to check with the planning department, but I don't think there is a central bank for this because when I have to go look, I have to go look at the parcel file. Then I have to look at the town's archives through Laserfish um, or go to the county. So this would be very helpful so that even though it's not official, it's a, it's a information to start. If there's an issue later in the future, it's information that will lead us somewhere else. So um, I believe to answer the question is that in cooperation with the committee and the planning staff or internal staff, that there should be, a, this bank should be uh, something that's shared with everyone so that we could just go to it and it's accessed. Uh, and maybe some people have certain rights to um, modify the information or not modify the information. And we could separate things into kind of town staff information from the planners and the developers and, 
and committee members and outside input in, in the town historian. So that's my input. And I hope that answers that question. And if Craig, you've had anything to chime in in also. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I was going with suggesting that we, you know, try and get it all in a GIS shapefile or something. Because I think a lot of the time when you're looking at stuff, Howard, you're probably doing it at, at some point, you're looking at the map in GIS. And so if you just had that as a layer, then you click it and it just gives you, you know, all the data you need right there that, that could potentially be a helpful way for, for you to be able to access it. But um, at, at least in the spreadsheet form, yeah, you know, it's a shareable Google Doc, then, then I think that would be great. And and that basically would be, I think, that sort of central place. Um, because as Howard said, I don't think we really have anything on the town side now. So this could be that um, as long as we just make sure that, you know, Howard has access to it. Yeah, I just want to make clear it's it's I feel like a lot of that stuff is is important, but it's mainly for the trails committee and the public or who's the public meaning who's on the trails committee for things like I'll give you an example, like the whole decision with Mike Nichols and that the kind of the tra the uh, signage change. You know, that's just that's gonna get lost now. And because we made the decision they put the thing and then I can just see 10 years later, he gets, there's a new owner or whatever. Well, how did that happen? Why did we do that? You know, it's just, these things are easily findable. And yes, there are going to be issues like where's the trail easement for fawn in this block. But my point is it, it's not, it's not meant to be something just like for Howard's team to search out a, a GIS situation. It's, it's for the committee, so we don't lose our decisions. And that people like me and Jacqueline aren't sitting here going, "Well, how, how? When did that happen? How did that happen?" Or even with Hillbrook is a great example. Wow, that we had to go back to Gary had to find the two thousand and one minutes. You know, we we need something where we can be like, "Okay, Hillbrook. Oh, okay, yeah." In twenty twenty two, they decided X Y Z. You know, all that's very useful information and I think useful to the town in various ways and there are committee in various ways. We, we might have to think about, you know, how the public gets to look at that information. Should they or should they not? I, I really don't know. I think about it. Um, and then if the town wants to collaborate with us on this, we just need a way to make sure it will survive in perpetuity as, as different people change in and out of our committee that doesn't get dropped, that it, right, it has a way to live um, at the town level or something. But I'm sure all those issues can be talked about in the subcommittee and I like where this is going. And um, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be interviewed. <laughs> can I interview myself? And, and <laughs> <clears throat> What do you guys think of me and one other person do, do, who, who, you know, I could do some help? But it has to be someone who's, you know, passionate about IT and, you know, tech and also figuring has kind of the same vision I do for this and who wants to interview people and that kind of thing. Well, what I can do is during our interview, I can start channeling everything I know and I have to you, which in a way is kind of helping you. But and I think we can do that with a lot of different committee members. Susan certainly would have some of that information, Barb, Ellie. Uh, Joe, yeah, everybody really. Um, in terms of having a second person on the subcommittee, um, we just need a volunteer. And since we don't have all our committee members here, maybe we should do that next time. Okay. Um, people can think about it. Uh, unfortunately, it won't be me. I'm going to be so entrenched in school board stuff next year that I just won't have uh, time, unfortunately. Year after that, though, <laughs> count me in. <laughs> okay, well, we can better figure that out this month. Um, who can introduce me to Nancy Lund? I can. She's my next door neighbor. Oh, fabulous. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to be coming at you guys, interviewing you. Cool. Yeah. Any more comments uh, on that? We don't have any other public left, so no public comments. Um, Gary, can I just ask Howard something? Of course. Which is... Um, Joe Coleman put the list together for the trails for people to check on. He mentioned note water bar issues and those issues go to Howard and he will take the signage issues. Now, I've sent over the years uh, lists of signs that need replacing. And I think Liz Babbitt mentioned something about that, forming a committee for that, which I don't know if we need, but what happens about that? Should we send them to Howard? I mean, I can 
resurrect my signs and go take a look and see what need replacing. Um, that's one question. And the other question is regarding the water bar issues, because on uh, not hayfields, but hay fork, there is a problem there. Uh, Liz Rubin had said that one, the rebar is sticking up. Also on trails in the Raj, there are some uh, water bars that have been removed, I would suggest maybe by bikers, because who, who would remove them other, other than that, and haven't been replaced. So are we still using water bars? Because you know, Midpen uses rolling swales, which are big dips to wick away water. So are we still using water bars and should they be replaced? Should we report the ones that are rusted or, or rotten? Uh, how would, what should we do about water bars and about the signs? Howard, you got your hand up, please jump in. Okay. Um, concerning water bars, uh, yes, we still use them. Uh, as we renovate trails, sometimes we use a rolling dip instead. Uh, so as I mentioned, the water bar checks happen in several weeks, about this time, you know, late. They've always happened late November, December. So when we start checking for them, we'll check for the health of the water bars and if they need to be replaced or restaked. So if there are specific water bars, uh, you could always email me or go through PV Connect. Um, did I, I hope I answered your question, Ellie? On that? Well, the reason I asked you about it is because there have been water bars that have rotted away and I've, I believe I have never known any to be replaced. I've never seen a new one. So I wasn't sure if you were doing that. I just went the other day on the trail by, um, by the frog pond there because there was a rebar sticking up and I pounded it in. Uh, and I guess the same problem is happening on the Hay Fork Trail where there's a rebar sticking up because the water bar is so, uh, I, I mean, I guess I can go and try and pound that in so that somebody or a horse doesn't step on it. So that's what I was wondering, wondering, because I have never seen them replaced. Uh, so if you are saying that when they're in a bad state, they will be replaced, that's good to know because I, I, I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, when, when they're reported, if they're not functional state, because some of them will, will get old, but as long as they're functional, and usually our crew will dig out the bottom of the water bar, uh, you know, we'll put them on a schedule to replace. And we have replaced water bars before. Okay, that's interesting, because I'm on the trails all the time in the good weather. And okay, and also about the signs, because I had sent a, a list to you over the over the months or the years with different signs, but I don't know uh, what we're doing these days. Do we replace the ones that are all uh, faded out? Uh, do we need to send them to you or to PV Connect or, sh well, here well, Joe says send them to him, so. You can't see this because you're on the phone, Ellie, but um, Liz has put up her um, signage issues spreadsheet, or I guess it's just a doc. <laughs> I see it right here, right. Oh, yeah, okay, great. So she's tracking those, and I imagine... Okay. Could... I, I mean, I, I gave this now to Joe. Right, so this is getting folded into Joe's stuff, which then will allow us to put priorities on it and then okay. give it to Howard. If it's something like rebar and you think it's really dangerous, put that on PV Connect right away. Don't, don't hesitate, because if it's a safety issue, um, it shouldn't be going through this, this longer process. Um, but if it's a signage issue then um, give it to Joe. If Liz has completed her work, it sounds like she has, give it straight to Joe. We'll prioritize it uh, and then get it to Howard. That's okay. how, that, how it should work. Thank you. And how does it come to me? I, I wanna make sure that I'm not missing something that's being sent, Liz. Uh, it would just be emailed to you and you would enter it into this spreadsheet. Right. Okay, good, yep. And okay. one thing that I was telling Joe is if you take a picture of where you think a sign should be, if that's the issue, or where there's a sign issue. If you take a picture of it, you can get the coordinate. If you use an iPhone, you can get the coordinates of that and, and put that in your email. I can tell people how to do that, they don't know, and, and put that in the email to Joe. Then he can put the coordinates in here. And then like right here, I did that. And then you can, we could put, he, you know, when we decide it could easily be pulled up, be like, oh yeah, that's where it's needed. Or, oh, that's where that's, that sign is faded. Right. Okay, great. That's uh, 
Well done, Liz, uh, collecting all that information. I know yeah, there's quite a few of them when you start counting them, isn't there? <laughs> uh, the other thing to just make sure we set the expectation that, you know, signs are expensive. We just don't replace them, you know, all the time. We tend to wait for them to fail or to have a very important reason to change them. So just be patient in some cases and understanding that we're just not going to, we don't have the budget number one, but we're not going to be replacing signs um, unless they really need to be replaced. Uh, and that's where the prioritization, I think, is very important to Howard. Lisa? Yeah, I think we need to prioritize. And I think that this list can help inform our budget for next year. Absolutely. Absolutely. And actually, to, to clarify, that's Howard's budget. Our budget for the Trails Committee is only for things like the community hike and the horse fair. Uh, budget for trail maintenance itself is not routed through the our committee. It's it's put directly into Howard's buckets. And is that the same for um, you know physical improvements to the trails and new yeah. signage? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the capital improvement fits into that discussion for improvement. So it's exactly. a gray area. I, I think because probably application is several uh, depends on the situation. Yeah, you know, the, the town the town is a, a very formal process for um, receiving priorities from committees and a very formal budgeting process. And so we need to help them with that. Our job is to get a prioritized list of capital improvement and maintenance items to Howard uh, by the beginning of the year, because I think we start that process in January, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and then if we want that money to get approved for that June to June um, fiscal year, we need to make sure the council has that list in front of them prioritized. Um, it's not so easy as it used to be where I could just yell over the wall, we need a new sign. Okay, here's some money. This <laughs> <laughs> okay, great meeting everybody. Anything else? Before we I, have, I, have, I have one more thing and, yeah, and that is, and I see Howard's hands up too, but oh, okay. um, I just wanted to say that I was on the trail the other day and I ran into three horseback riders who informed me one of them had just fallen flat out with their horse. Neither of them were seriously hurt, which is amazing. Crossing uh, 165 Shawnee Pass. And then they told me that another horse and rider went down on 418 Portola Road. So luckily nobody got hurt, which is amazing because horses going down flat out on pavement with a rider is just like, oh. But I wanted us to know about that and I haven't, I'm gonna go and look at both those places. Um, the Portola uh, Road one, the rider said that she thought that perhaps the, um, it had been slurry sealed and never scored again. And maybe that was why. I and then a careful slippery on a Portola Road one. You know that one too? Yeah, I walk past it all the time. Um, where and where they, is they it? They put out some signs saying, watch out. Um, well, oh. I, put, I put those signs up. Oh, you because, put, okay, okay. Well, because, there are signs. Uh, yeah, somebody. Uh, anyway, so we need to we need to follow up with the homeowner on that one for sure. The other one on Shiny. Uh, Bob, excuse me. I've told the code enforcer about that one. Uh, Gary, okay. his name is yeah, but as you know, he's part time, and he said he was going to get onto it. I can check with him again. Okay, well, so we have a record of it. We just need to make sure. And, and one sixty five. I sent you an email about that, Bob. Oh, I didn't see so it. So refer to the email. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sorry. 165, Shawnee, I was just going to say that the whole, that the rider thought she went back and looked at it and she said that she thought maybe it was her error that the horse put one foot off of the scored area and then went totally down. That's how dangerous that is. But it's very I, narrow, that scoring. It's well, not very and wide. And that's the problem. That's it's my other not point. Very because wide. Then, yeah. There are areas that it's like two feet wide. You can't yeah. walk a horse on a two foot wide thing. They just, they, you know, they don't know. So I think we re we visited this a long time ago, um, but I think we need to pay attention again because, um, and, and, and follow up. So anyhow, okay. that's okay. all. Howard, uh, I'm sure you've noted that. Uh, and you have your hand up. You have another comment, Howard? Yeah, I'm just gonna go some quick things. Uh, the Denise Gilbert the request for the toy on trail that came about pretty fast because the trail center had a last minute drop on a date December 3rd so that came about last week she's requesting a pre walk a pre walk through post walk through town waiver information from the town and potentially the town to buy the materials also so just wanted to let the community know that 
So we're going to be working on that today to do those things. Um, we have our annual field renovations or our turf fields. So uh, just an FYI and signs will be posted on uh, field close on, on certain fields. Uh, this town center softball field and the performance line will be remained open uh, due to high use uh, for, for casual users. Uh, the paving is uh, done this year, our street resurfacing project. Uh, minor punch list items left, but for information, you can go to the town's website on it. Um, let's see, I can tell you concerning the easements in town for uh, trails easements, some of the discussions, I, could, I just wanna let the community know that there have been efforts put in into research. Um, and I will be talking to Craig Hughes, our town attorney and our town manager about it. There are some things that require a lot of thought and I'll leave it off at that. Great, thank you, Howard, for that. Um, and thank you, Craig and Howard, for doing that work on our behalf. We appreciate it. Um, there was a question by Liz concerning the budget. So uh, we have 57,200 uh, council approved budget for trails maintenance. Uh, of that, I think we only spent about $700. And remember, if that's because the, the, the budget year just started uh, in, in, in July. So the bulk of the budget that we spent for trimming uh, mowing was last year's uh, budget. So uh, once again, I want to mention that the 57 is for mowing trees and it's more mowing because we decided consciously not to spray uh, on a, a post and pre-emergent uh, on our trails uh, and maintenance work. Now, there is a separate a pot of money that the council approved for uh, uh, capital improvements from Joe's list and which we did one already off Joe's list and that's $20,000. So mm. I've asked the finance department to include those reports uh, next time around. So I hope I've answered that question, Liz. Is that okay? So the 20, we still have 20 grand of the capital improvement list or we use some of it for the, I think it was Shawnee. Uh, the Cervantes between the two Cervantes, Shawnees, I believe got charged to last fiscal year. Oh, okay. So we still have 20 grand in the entire capital budget. Is that your understanding too, Joe? No, I thought it was 30,000. Howard? No, it's it's twenty thousand. Oh, okay. There was talk about moving it up. Okay, I'll, I'll back up on. Yeah, then twenty thousand. And, and let me double check on what was charged to it. I, I just have the, the numbers I have right now is the regular maintenance money is the fifty seven thousand, and then right. the CIP money is twenty thousand. So okay. I know for the fifty seven thousand, only about seven hundred dollars was was expended for signs for the Cherokee Trail. But I will double then, check on the twenty thousand for you for next. Okay. Year. And then Alex, did you and Howard have, have a chance to meet on the start? Uh, no, um, he and Gary and I are going to meet uh, at a date that <laughs> works for all three of us, but we haven't met for that yet. No. So I think that's where Gary, that we are going to decide on that search physical improvement priorities list. What of that is maintenance would be in the 57,000 budget and what of that is capital and would be in the capital improvement budget, which we would have to prioritize among the current list. Okay, I guess that was talked about at the last meeting. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, you, were, you had a baby that day, um, yeah. but I, I emailed and so it's like you once you're like in a zone to like have time to talk about it. Uh, if you and yeah, I, I apologize, yeah, I haven't got to that one yet. Yeah, but, uh, no, it's all good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we just wanted to kind of differentiate between like conceptually, like if we want to widen a trail, is that maintenance or is that capital improvement if it's just been grown in over time um, and just sort of break down like maybe we could classify some things as repairs because you know it used to be that way as opposed to like all weathering a trail would be a capital improvement because that's a lot of work um, yeah so we, we can definitely do that um i'll look at your email and then i'll get back to you on some times cool. definitely okay and, uh, i'll continue just quickly um let's see Sign, on the signs that were just mentioned, I, I don't I haven't received a list of signs. I'm assuming uh, if someone can email me that at some point, then we can take a look at it. Or if it's not finished yet. Um, no, I it, what it is we're just we're gathering through the public maps project. We walked all the trails and we were like, what should we do with all the information? We're seeing like, God, this is really confusing. Needs a sign or this sign was destroyed. Or I mean, basic ones we we sent to PV Connect. And then 
the ones that we're thinking, wow, this needs to be discussed by the committee and prioritized. That's what's on that Google sheet that Joe is keeping now because he's the keeper of, you know, this trail steward list and you're supposed to be walking your trails and coming up with this info. So I don't think it's like ready for prime time Howard to look at yet. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah cause I was just looking through my emails. I didn't receive anything and, or I didn't see anything from Ellie either, but I was- oh, That was years ago. Uh, oh, I <laughs> sent them to you maybe about three years ago. And then I said, whenever you get around to it, cause remember things used to be very much more casual. So, but I'm happy to go and make a list and, and on my travels and I will send them to Joe. Good. These are signs that are like deteriorated to the extent where you can barely see the, you know, yeah, the yellow. I, I, I mean, can we get clarity on that? I feel like that should be PV Connect, right? Like yeah. this yeah. is a sign that's already there, yeah. dilapidated. Like let's spend 150 bucks and get the sign updated. Versus, there is a, a serious need for signage, like we just did at Mike Nichols thing, or there's a serious need for signage at Larry Lane where Herb Dengler, whatever, right? That's this list that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Right? Like, if I see a sign that's dilapidated, I'm just going to put it on PV Connect. I think that's exactly the right thing to do. Um, if it's a sign that you cannot read, well, then it's not functioning. So then that's a, a detriment to the public. So we should go to PV Connect, and that's a maintenance item, right? That's a that. But if we need a new sign, or we're going to change a sign, it sounds to me like that's more capital improvement stuff. Um, let me ask you this, Liz. Do you do you want to try to? do this offline and subcommittee or do you want the full committee to digest this so list? I had, it's a great question. I had originally said, hey, we need a signage subcommittee. And you said, no, you know, let's not add layers, Liz. Let's everybody who's a trail ambassador walk your trails and any issues or faded signs go to PV Connect. And then let's have this list that the whole committee can, you know, take a beat in three months, or whatever, and say, look, we got, we got to do something here because this falls into the safe routes to schools. There were some sign, new signs needed. There were some current signs that need, were suggested to be moved, et cetera. So that's like, how do we get that done? Like that, that just doesn't um, want. Uh, here's, here's what I suggest. This is very similar to what we do with the capital improvement stuff anyway. So send the list out to the entire committee. The, the committee can take a look at the list. We'll, we'll agendize it at our, our next meeting. And we'll talk about that. We'll try to do two, we'll, 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 really one thing. We'll just separate into uh, maintenance items and, and capital improvement items. Maintenance items will go to Howard. Capital improvement items will go to Joe. And I, I, you're right. I don't think we need a subcommittee to do that. I, I was just wondering if the existing subcommittees were already doing that. And if they're not, that's not a big deal. Um, this is, I think, a pretty straightforward exercise. So uh, if you can, so if the list is ready, send it out to the committee. Uh, nobody reply, please. <laughs> uh, I'll include it in our package for our next meeting. We'll we'll discuss it there, and we'll we'll get it at least designated to either one pot or the other. Um, if there's questions about whether the sign should really be changed or not, well, then that's a different story. But um, if we know it needs to be changed, then it, it's either a capital improvement to Joe or maintenance to Howard. And Gary, that, that's what it is. The ones I've seen are the ones that are discolored completely. So it would involve money because you're saying they cost 100, 200 bucks each. Yeah, it's a different. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's I'm a different pot of money. PV Connect. I think that's PV Connect personally. Yeah, it's a different pot of money. So if it, if it does, Ellie, need to be replaced because it's worn out, that's a main, right. Yeah, that's a maintenance, maintenance? item. Okay. You, can put, you can put that right to PV Connect now. I mean, that's yeah. that's okay. Hey, so, Howard and Craig, is there in the definition of capital improvement, does the town have a minimum dollar amount, like a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars or anything? Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's just a different line item in the budget. So um or just a different bucket in the budget, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they tend to be larger dollar amounts. They tend to be, you know, things that are in the sort of tens of thousands of dollars and up range. And it's the, the purpose of it is really to figure out, okay, here are all the capital improvements we want to make. We don't have an infinite amount of money. And so, you know, what do we want to do this year versus next year versus three years from now? So we can, 
we can kind of look ahead five years and say, okay, we've got X million dollars altogether. How do we spread that over time so that we actually have the revenue to pay pay for it all? Yeah. Um, so if it's if it's you know a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, then that probably wouldn't go on the capital projects list unless there are you know eighteen things that are a thousand dollars each. Then it adds up to a reasonable amount of money. Then we might want to include it as you know one item. Yep, yeah, Mike, I understand that. Good. And for us, Joe, you know, it's good to prioritize these things and, and then the council can do whatever they want to do with it in terms of paying it. But the, the important part for us is to prioritize what needs to get done sooner than later. Yeah, right? I think we've always, we've always put them in the order of preference. Right. So, okay. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, Ellie, if it needs to be um, done now, if it's a safety issue, if you're concerned, send it straight to PB Connect. Anybody can do that. It can be on the list and PV Connect. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Yeah. If it's something we're going to change as part of Safe Route to Schools as, or part of the uh, town uh, trail map, then that's probably going to go to Joe. Right. Okay. Uh, Gary, one more thing. The trails and equestrians. Um, after the rains we had two weeks ago, I thought for sure that the trails would need to be closed. But uh, I've been out recently and uh, in Blue Oaks and uh, the ranch and there. I shouldn't say bone dry, but almost, sadly. So I think we can hold off closing them for right now. And if it does have another dump, uh, we will assess it then. I think that's- uh, And I, you know, my sidekick is Susan Gold, who is the hiking person. So I'll weigh in with her too and see what she thinks. But on the I horse, on it looks good. ranch trails yesterday, they're fine. There's a couple little muddy, like sections off to the side here and there, but right. nothing serious. Uh, all the other trails I've been on are just fine right now. So it looks like maybe rain next week. We'll see. But I, don't uh, know. Is there, well, I hope so. But can we look at it then? If it... It's a week out. Who knows what will really happen? But they're saying maybe Monday or Tuesday next week. Okay. Well, we'll assess it then. Yep. Good plan. I a couple more items there, just quickly. Go, oh, Howard. So uh, there was mention about some traffic uh, improvements. And I just want to let everyone know that you go to the town's website under VPTS, it'll list the, 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 the history, the timeline, uh, and our efforts so far. Um, so the, the rapid flashing beacons aren't the only things we're working on. Um, you know, just to give everyone's heads up, we're looking at potential no parking signs on Patola Road across from Windy Hill. So if you want a summary of the timeline and the things that are happening, uh, if you can go to the VPTS website. And please also continue to use PV Connect. Or, you know, Ellie, I can help you out too. Uh, I do recall some of the signs that you brought up and they were kind of the old metal signs. I, I remember we talking about some of the older signs that says no motorized vehicles. No, no, like no, they're the new plastic sign, but never mind. I'll, I'll scrounge around and take another look and then maybe do a loop around before it rains and see if I can get a list together. But thank you. So, thank you everyone for using PV Connect and continuing to provide input. Thank you. We need some PV Connect t-shirts. <laughs> we're at the town functions okay great meeting everybody if there's nothing else i'll call for a motion to adjourn uh, i make a motion ellie ellie and joe will second all in favor Aye. have a great day thank you everyone thank you gary um